I hate that song, by hate the way. Hate these shirts on our back <laughs> telling you. Freaking Leanne Rhymes. I don't think, she's not the originator of that too. Well, she should have put it to bed. She sang that? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's her big hit. Well, that's not her song. Look at this, Target Renegade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ultima. And I had to print these up because I, I was like, my God. This right here is the reference card, the manual, mm -hmm. the... Uh, the Book of Lore, and the other book. Oh my gosh! You never looked at any of this stuff. No, did no, you? of course I did. I had to look at the spells. And but stuff. I mean, not. I mean, did you actually print this thing with the folklore and stuff in no, it? Oh gosh, no. The folklore. <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, the other games. You had to sort of know what happened in the previous. I know. I have any idea? What I watched a bunch of videos about it. Did you watch that geek? Yes. That guy was the worst. <laughs> he had his bits in there. Yep. Even by my standard of bits, they were poor. I was like, man, this guy, can you just get to the point, geek? He's like, I'm going to tell you some waga waga. Yeah. It's like, oh. Yeah. Let me do a little soft. And he's the only guy. Boy. He's like, this is all we've got. <laughs> what up, yo? We just started, Edwin. Don't worry. Hey, did anybody... Actually, I can check this myself. No. I set up a little bot on the Twitter to see if... Uh, it's go time. Go time. We're ready. We're ready. We're locked, cocked, and ready to rock. Oh, please, God. I Avoid did. that. I didn't work. Why'd that come up first? <laughs> Get it out. All right. Look at you. Like It looks like you do kind of look like Ric Flair, like a Dutch I one. know. Look at your hair. The yeah. The it yeah. looks like you've got a white hair and a white beard, like some kind of Nordic Ric Flair. <laughs> That's the look I, I strive to achieve. <laughs> Yeah, I, I set up this, um, oh, wait a minute, let's see, do this. Oh, man, all right, yeah. Man. I set up this bot that supposedly will automatically post Twitter when we go oh, live. Oh, jeez. Oh, it good. did not work, so I'm going to manually. Does it come it up and say, you all suck? No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not talking about the relative demerits of the Amiga in America. We are so healthy, it actually hurts me. <laughs> I'm a little, I've got a little cold going, but... Uh, Nothing. This is my usual. You're all you're you're ill quite often. That's not. I mean, you are. No, I'm not. Not quite often. It's just like this time of year, a little bit. Man, it kept creeps in. Listen, you're gonna think you. I'm hoping I won't scratch my nose a million times. My nose just gets itchy occasionally. Did somebody get on to you about that? How can? No, you... I got on to myself okay, because it's I saw and Brent you, too. I saw you reply to that. And... Sometimes my nose just gets real itchy. I mean, what I don't. Can you I, don't do? I don't know why. I don't know what it means. You know, it could be the Coke. That's why I got That's true. Here. That's true. Okay, fine. I'm not gonna have a cold. No, I, I, You've got a Coke habit. I snorted a little too much, man. <laughs> now wait a minute. This isn't a bot. I know I, the bot didn't work. Amigo's evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Hashtag cinema where it sucks. <laughs> no, no, mm -hmm. no controversy. Hmm. Mm. How are you guys on over there? How, are anybody corona it up? We've made a point that we're not going to mention that hideous disease on the show. Well, they say that, but what do they know? Put, come join us. I demand it. You have been summoned. <laughs> I'll never see your picture the same again. I, I don't to get a Dutch boy... Blonde Dutch boy hair. I know. It's like, it's sort of like, have you ever seen those pictures of Jesus where it's like the inverse and the outverse? They're usually like etched in, etched in wood. Let me ask you a question. Did you take the original picture of you and then cunningly digitize it to take off the hair part? Well, by cunningly digitize, you mean did I use the erase button That's in Photoshop? Right. Yes. I knew it. <laughs> I didn't recommission a new portrait Why? when I cut all my hair off. Could, you could have made your head a little bit bigger. Like, there's a chunk of your head missing. Listen, man. That seems painful. Sometimes you got to lose a chunk of head every once in a while. <laughs> you telling me? <laughs> I don't know. And, you know, Twitch is slow to respond to the, uh, like, I, I updated that, but it's still the wrong thing. Boat is my special friend, guys. In case you were wondering, don't worry. We have no cases in West By God, Virginia. We are locked, cocked, and ready to rock. Hey, 10 mark. The mountains protect us. That's right. Plus the poverty. It goes a long way because we can't travel anywhere. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Our reputation as an economic and social background <coughs> is trying to come back to help us. That's right, man. What's up, Bark? Bark and Mark. They Who's Mark? In. 10 mark. Oh, what's up, 10 mark? He's not here. Oh, yeah, yeah there he is. <laughs> hey, Dunk. 
It's a cavalcade of stars. What's up? The stars have came out to shine. Did I lob? What's up, lob? My God, where they're all picks. here. Yeah. We need boss man. Curtis? Boss man is too busy running his company. He rarely is able to join us live. That's the same problem I got. You're always running. Something. I'm running my company off. They won't leave the house. Listen, when the KSP <laughs> needs something done, they know who to call. That's right. That's you think man. the boss listens? My boss? Yeah. No. Did you mention the show when God, you were at lunch no, with him? Because I've filmed some stuff at the lab. Oh. I don't think I'd get over too good. <laughs> That's probably good. <laughs> What's up, Mitt? Hey, Mitsuyama. Well said. I wouldn't even go try. I was afraid I'd botch it. Go insult Mitsuyama out of the gate. Oh, I didn't turn on the light. Look how dark you are. It's all darkened. What light? Through yonder yendo booby. What are you up to here? You go to all the way over there? Oh. The that didn't make a difference. Not one bit of difference. Did it not? No. I don't know what's going on with our lighting system. I mean, I spent spent thousands on these custom did you know, lights. Did you notice how much co more colorful and less disturbing me and Brent looked this last week? I never watched the show. I want to listen. That's too bad because you're missing all the visible age. I know. But I uh, I sweetened the color this week. Did you? Yeah. yeah well, what did you? It looked like we shot the show at, like in Willy Wonka's factory. It was brilliant. <laughs> you know, I've done that in the past before. Oh, yeah? Um, if you look at some of our previous shows with the green screen, I've, I've sweetened things a little bit. And some I want of something it... to make my cheeks real rosy yeah. and the rest of me pale, you know? <laughs> Like I'm Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> um, I uh, I asked Brent if he got any kind of notification when I started supporting the show, you know, on Anchor. Yeah. He said he got nothing. I was appalled by that. I couldn't believe you kicked in. What do you mean? <laughs> of course I'm going to kick in. You're kicking into yourself. No, because do I get that money? No. Yeah. Oh, Brent has to pay a tribute. Don't act like you're not getting anything, Godfather. <laughs> you kidding me? Did you know the theme to The Godfather has words? No, I didn't know they had words. Are they Italian? No, um, it's it's called like Speak Softly Love. Huh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, I have this big piano book that I've been playing out of and that came up, came up on the list. All right, Aaron. Tell me about Treasure Hunt. Treasure Hunt. Now this, I think this is an interesting tale. So... A couple of months ago, my parents said, listen, we got a new store up in Jefferson. Now, Je Jefferson is in... Um, it, it's it, somewhere, it's right before It's right you outside of Charleston. St. Albans. It's between St. Albans and right. St. Charleston. And, she, and they said, listen, you get, there's a place called Treasure Hunt out there. You need to go check this place out. Now, Jefferson is sort of shady. It is the shadiest place around. They've de-shaded it quite a bit here recently. Well, most of the shady places could not, were not economically viable. Anymore. Well, no, they were economically viable. They shut them down. Oh, really? All the strip clubs and... They dirt, shut them all down? Triple X bookstores. They're, they're pretty much... They got rid of most they of them. They still got a couple. So... You got to keep up with Me and uh, Tree and the, and the boy went up there. And so here's what you get in this treasure hunt. I've all... I, I passed by... Because this is on the way to my church. So I passed by I this place. Have I you about every, this before? No, no. This is brand new to me. So we go into treasure hunt. And the place is packed. Packed. Okay? And you roll up. And now the one in Jefferson, you're up on this like, almost like a balcony as you come in. You overlook the floor. The treasure. That makes it scarier, frankly. Really? Because the way this thing works is, there's about, uh, let's say, 15 huge bins. Bins are uh, uh, about as high as, as, your, as your belly. Mm -hmm. and are as wide as, like, you know, I don't know, what, help me out here, how wide is that? I'd say it's about four feet wide. Yeah, about, well, yeah, something like that. Four foot by four foot wide, these huge, deep So bins. these are like uh, like la big laundry ba <laughs> baskets, right? Right, they're just big bins. In these bins, it's just piles of random stuff. Okay. Okay? And picture, like, I don't know, 15 or 20 bins. Okay. Scattered around this big room. Picture a bunch of goofs going through these bins Looking All for gold. the time. Okay, yeah. so what's in the bins, right? Well, when you walk in, they've got a big pile of green sacks. They're not bags because to call them bags would be too dignified. Mm. These are sacks. Okay, they're, they're plastic. No, they're uh, I don't know nylon or something. Okay. They're, they're sacks. Yeah, like a right? tarp material. Yeah, because you don't keep the sack. Those go back to the crew. I see. Okay. Okay. So you take your sack mm -hmm. and then you begin your treasure hunt, which means you go through these bins trying to find stuff you want. Now, the prices change almost every day at this place, all right? One price for the, each item you pull out of this bin. So, for example, today, being Friday, five bucks an item. So whatever you pull out of this thing, 
It's five bucks. And I've seen on the sign, every day there's a different price. That's right. There's a reason for that. They get fresh stuff, I think, twice a week. Okay. So on Friday and I think Sunday, they get fresh stuff. So Friday and Saturday and Saturday, I think, are five bucks. Monday's four bucks. Tuesday's three bucks. And I think Wednesday, it's a buck. And then there's a little bit of time in the morning where it's 50 cents. So they're really trying to get rid of stuff on Wednesday. Right. Now, why is that? Well, it's because every, all this crap's been picked over. Yeah. Only the dregs are left. Right. So uh, we went there on a Tuesday. So everything was like three bucks. Right. And I dug through these bins. And what these bins contain are returns, as far as I could tell. These are returns or not sold merchandise from Amazon. Okay. Okay. Okay, so not necessarily all <coughs> junk, right? It's a lot of it's pa packaged. A lot of it's unopened. Sure. Some of it's open, but you can't hard some of it's taped shut. Mm -hmm. Some of it you can't tell what it is, okay? So you go through these bins and you're there with the the the, uh, the people that frequent this place and of course I am now amongst them. They're not what I would call um high society. There's no tuxes being worn or yeah. top hats, you know yeah. what I'm saying? These are a lot of these people are resellers. Yeah, of course. Right. They're trying to get an angle. So the first time I went, I managed to pick up one of those Starcom capture boards, which by the way works with C64. You know, the little USB ones. Really? Yeah. There was one just hanging I out. I picked there. up an, an, this thing that splits HDMI and the stereo. It's this real elaborate box. Okay. I picked up a USB to IDE slash SATA hard drive thing that is for external drives. That's so, awesome. Like that thing right there? It's like that, but way, way, way better. Okay. Fully boxed, brand new. Cool. This stuff was all new. Teresa picked up some, like, clothes. Some, like, these big, frilly, like, those things you wear under, like, a, a prom dress or whatever. Something like, you know what I'm saying? Those big, I don't know what they're called, hoop skirts or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, we picked up, uh, oh, I got a digital a antenna for a TV, you know, uh, in a box. Yeah. All this stuff boxed. It was a good, five bucks a piece. That, that sounds was three about, bucks. That sounds great, man. That was three bucks a piece. So, me and Greg are driving. I was driving through town the other day, and I see a place called Treasure Hunt in Ashland. I'm like, I wonder if that's the same kind of gimmick. Right. So, at lunch today, instead of going to lunch, we went over there, and it's exactly the same, same gimmick. I think the same people own it. You get the bag. This place was much less crowded, and I went today. And today, I didn't. I didn't have the time to go through and. If I had the time, if you're a reseller, you could make a lot of money. All right. But if, I was just looking for certain stuff. So I picked out a box from, it was made in China that just was wrapped up. It said game console. I picked it up. I also picked up these two things, these two Christmas boxes that were in a bag that said game controller. I just picked them up. All right. And I picked up this thing that let, it's a Wi Fi extender because I need one for the arcade. Sure. Okay. So I spent 15 bucks. I took these back to the lab, and I because it'd be fun to open them. Yeah, That's why I bought yeah. it. So the game console is a game console. It's this generic Chinese game console you'd give to a kid. It's got like 15, 20 games on it, but nothing. Is it, is it like your um, the thing you got the red thing? The... It's, no, that had Nintendo games. This has games specifically made for this. Oh, okay. okay. But it did work, as best I could tell. I played it. The game controllers. I opened them up, and what they are are two brand new. PS4 Bluetooth controllers, like knockoffs, basically. Okay. For, I got both of them for five bucks. That sounds like a great deal. Yeah, plus the extender. So this place is really cool if you want to... But with the the, the flip side of it being, you're going to have to go in there and get in it. Mix it up. And you got to set some time. But I mean, the, the thing that, I, that interests me is that I've seen these videos on YouTube, as I'm sure you have, of uh, <laughs> people that buy pallets of Amazon returns. Have you seen these videos before? Uh, yes, I have. And so I'm sure what Treasure Hunt does is buy these pallets in bulk, break them down, put them in the put them in the baskets, and then open the floodgates for the masses. You're probably right. I find it interesting though, and I, I will say, I put back wireless Bluetooth headsets. Game they had game controllers, they had keyboards, Bluetooth keyboards. They had a, a gaming headset I put back that I was going to get. There's a ton of stuff here. You've got to be willing to take the chance. It might be broken. I'm sure it there's no be. there's no returns at a place no, like this. No, no, no. But so far, everything I've ever gotten there worked. Mm -hmm. And they also had a ton of stuff sealed in a box. You don't know what it is. This place, I don't think the other place had this, but if they did, I didn't see it. 
This place is a place where you can take a sealed box over, and there's an employee at a table, and they open it for you. Let's see what's in it. And, and then, then you the, can they'll take it back the, up and put it back if you don't want it. So there's no penalty for opening no. the box. No. Interesting. Yeah. And then they take cash or card. I walked right up to the counter. I was gone. You know, that's so different than what I thought it was. And what so did much you cooler. think it was? I thought, well, I knew it was, I knew it was garbage, but I, I didn't know if it was um, like sort of like Dollar Tree level stuff. But this is like legit stuff that's just been returned. Absolutely to, legit. Yeah. Now, the, the first place I went had a lot more appliances out there. They had rice makers and bread makers, and both places had tons of these like specialty lighting, you know, like stuff to put stars in the ceiling or yeah, LEDs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tons of stuff that related to your phone, phone cases. Phone I can stuff. see these places being, whenever there are sort of faddish products, whenever the fad goes away, these places are flooded with, with stuff like that. They also that. had books. Really? Sealed in plastic, you know, like big books. Yeah. You know? um, lots of stuff. Uh, you'll see stuff for like the kitchen, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the other place we went had makeup, you know. Uh, there was tons of stuff. And I, I literally scratched the service today. I didn't have that much time. I'll go back. But it was neat. If you're a reseller, you could probably make some money in here. Mm -hmm. But it is wacky, you know. And you never know what you're going to find. <laughs> yeah. Maybe nothing. Now, you didn't see any any actual video game games, though. Right? Um, I did see kids' games, yeah. Oh, okay. And some DVDs, you know. Mm -hmm. So, your mileage may vary. I assume it would change radically different days. Right. We may have to uh, take a trip there together one day. That Starcom USB video capture board, it's better than the generic one I've got. Mm -hmm. And I that I used it to, I hooked the C64 up to it the other night, and uh, it worked. You, I, you're the one that suggested it, but you didn't know I had this one. Yeah. I went and got it, and it worked. So, yeah. When, are, uh, when is that C64 stuff coming out? I haven't put it, I haven't filmed it yet. That was a, oh, it was just a test, yeah. test run? Yeah. But it worked. It worked, man. And now I've got the C64 lined out. I, I got a... Uh, Email from I think it was Bossman actually sent me the email. I have to look and see who it was. Oh no, it's Paul Paul Kitching. That was it, Paul Kitching. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, he sent me one, the same thing. And uh, that helped. Mm -hmm. Now I needed one for the Amiga, and I'll be laughing because my Amiga build sucks. For the for I the, need that too for the uh, uh, GoTech. So yeah, it was very successful though. I was pleased. Two PS4 joysticks for five bucks. Either they're knockoffs. Not bad. Yeah, not, not bad. bad at all. You should go down there. I should. Yeah, it's I, good. I want to now that you now that you've told me what it is because I literally drive by there all the time. Oh gosh, Buck! I'm sorry to hear that. Listen, before we get into the show, since we're not going to talk about this crap on the show, yeah, I'm sorry everyone's getting killed by this virus. It sucks. Uh, we hate it. Our schools are canceled for two weeks, right, or or more. The boats out. My kids out. There's a chance I could be missing work because of this crap. Not good. We're not happy, are we? I'm not happy at all. I, normally, I jump in the chance itching already. for two weeks off, but not in these circumstances. Yeah, it stinks. What are you going to do? All but right. We're going to forget all that mm -hmm. and classically old school it up, boat. That's right. Let me make sure all my ducks are in a row here. Yeah, let me do the same. Did you turn your silence? <clears throat> I did. Was that Granny making sure no, you were still was, doing No, that was my show? buddy at work. Oh, really? Your yeah, partner? He, yeah, he says that it doesn't look too bad for us, so that's good. That's a good thing, because I wasn't liking what I was hearing from my boss. It's not good. What the hell? Let's see. I was surprised that the schools got shut down like that, because here we had no cases in the state. I was surprised. I, it, I, honestly, I believe that it has to do with the threat of litigation. Yeah, liability. That's yeah. all this stuff is liability. Yeah. Oh, look at that. He's posting something. Gosh, is that... We just have one. Just that one. I, didn't see, I haven't read that. Oh, man. And this is a game we actually... Did we, did we cover this one, Navy SEAL? Yeah, boy, it seems like we did. Because I, I like this game, actually. I, the movie was not good. Okay. I still got to fill out my thing for Graham. You know, Graham looks like he's having a, a great time yeah, down in Africa. Yeah, helicopter all, rides, motorcycle we're getting, sidecar. We're getting screwed up here. Graham's in there living like a kid. Have you ever been in a motorcycle sidecar before? Are you before? kidding me? There's not a sidecar made. That just seems like that's one of the most humorous images I can conjure up in my mind. I can you only get you. into it. I can never leave. That's that's how I want to be buried. Just put me in a sidecar. <laughs> just drive you on it. Drive me right to the grave. Just cut the sidecar off the side. Just dump it in. That's it. Okay, so uh, we got the one deal i'll try and remember to do the uh i did good last week you didn't even have to give me the signal and i remember yeah the you did a good job dude 
Look at that. Hey, you have plenty of time to make new videos, and I might too. Look at that. Joe Rogan. I should have brought that game machine up here. It's molded with like triggers on it. But you say it's moldy. It's like, moldy. Oh, no, it's great. But when you when you grab it, you realize that the triggers are actually molded. They're just plastic really? at the top. Yeah. I can never remember Ooh, how to. Ooh, Hiroshita. To... I like her. What are know. those ladies' nights matches that keep popping up on our feed? They had for, they had a, a empty arena match, and it, I, I guess I haven't watched them, so I wasn't me. Well, I think they just get suggested. But yeah. I mean, what is that like? Is it sort of like more exploitative women's wrestling, where they're like, "Here's some lady wrestlers." No, the ladies' that aren't that night good, is a, it's they're... all women. No, they're great. I okay. mean, they're indie stuff. Indie stuff. They're not always great, but you know. How do I get to where they just show our videos? You're there. No. Here it is. I always forget how to get to. Go the to videos. I hate everything that they've done. I know, it's and it gets worst. worse. They keep making it worse. It's like we know you'll, we know you're gonna miss this studio, but well, it's going away. So screw you. Sign YouTube. It's like, but why are you changing it? Shut up. Right. That's why. You don't like it? Go to a competitor. Ha ha ha. Okay. You ready to start the show? <laughs> yeah. How's our hey, uh, chat? How is our uh, audio levels? Are they okay? How's my color? Do I look okay out there? Fine. Hold on a second. Hold on. I need to pick me up. I'm gonna put this in and drink out of both. Thank Good. You, Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. Have you played the uh, Have you played much of the Coco game this week? The uh, Dick, Mr. Digger, or whatever. Yeah, it's I played the heck out of it. What do you think about that boulder situation on that? Well, if you let the boulder fall, I mean, you won't be able to play it the way that you play it because you you, ha you learn that trick. It's killing me. Right. But um but you Literally. you can if you let the boulder fall one step then you and it cracks then you can push it. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Good hit, boat. Well, I read the uh that I didn't I didn't find that out on my own that came from the Thank Coco, you, Morte. Coco Talk community. All right. We are low, Paul, if you know what I mean. Here we get the intro. Oh yeah. Support the Amigos podcast on Patreon or PayPal and receive cool perks and rad swag. Visit our page at everythingamiga.com slash support. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hi everybody, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to talk about Ultima 5. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh my. <laughs> now, you're a big role-playing guy. I'm big and I'm into role-playing heavily, yes. Yeah. Um, and whenever you first heard about computer role-playing, yeah. were you skeptical? Uh, well, well, I was super duper young. And my role playing began really after computer gaming. Probably was already. Oh, know. I see. You gotta think. Uh, the first computer games were that RPGs were like the '60s, you know. So it was already a thing. Uh, but uh, I was, I enjoyed them. But I didn't. I never looked at I, to this day. I still don't. I never looked at computer role playing games as role playing games because they're not. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in my opinion, not to cheese anyone off, because if you actually play a role-playing game, you're playing a character, a role in a game, with, and you're interacting with other people who are playing characters. It's a social thing. It's hard to uh, it's hard to recreate that in a game. Now, is it impossible? No. Uh, but uh, it's difficult, and I've played very few where I got that feeling that, like, we were pulling it off. You know? But I will say uh, MMOs, it made it easier, although even then it's not... Listen, you can't have an MMO or RPG game without a bunch of idiots running through going like, I need so, I need a... You know, they're like cussing or whatever, mm. you know, because it's the net, so it's a double-edged sword. But uh, I did play some of the early games, and uh, I was never super into them, to be honest with you. And even now, I'm not that into them either. Because when you've actually had really good role-playing games in real life, it's it's I don't I never get the same 
fun sensation that, that I do on a computer game. But yeah. still, if it's all you got, you know, or some people are really into them, or if you look at them from a tactical aspect of it, or you just really get into your character, you can sort of, I mean, you can role play it yourself in your head. You mm-hmm. know, yes, I, I can. But. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um, I didn't do any role playing at all until I really. I mean, the first serious, serious role playing I ever did was with you uh, when we when we had that long running game here at Amigo Studios pre podcast. Yeah. Um, but I've always been into role playing. Like I would look at stat books and stuff like that growing up. I just never had anybody to play with. Um, and I will say that I was attracted to role playing games because of that simple fact. You know. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea, and of course, I grew up being a console guy, so with a, like Dragon Warrior games on, on the Nintendo. Yeah. And I like the fact that here was a game that I could beat without being particularly dexterous. All I'd have to do is level up my character enough to where I can roll in and beat some butt. And that was that was attractive to me because I was not very good at video games, much like now. Now, you offer me an interesting uh, line of questions here because I've never I've always wondered this, but I can ask you. Because you're into like Zeldas and uh, Dragon Warrior and all this stuff that I'm not. Zelda's not a role playing game. Well, okay, remove Zelda, okay. That's, and that's your opinion. Um, when you played, uh, what what is your favorite computer role playing game? My favorite computer role playing game is probably Chrono Trigger. On okay, the Super Chrono Nintendo. Trigger. That's yeah. that's fine. You've actually role played in games, and you have played Chrono Trigger well before you did actual role playing. Compare and contrast the two, because I know I didn't play Chrono Trigger, mm-hmm. but I have played games that like I've played some of the Gold Box stuff and in Eyes Beholder, but mm-hmm. stuff like that that I can never look at like I do role playing. And for you that played one before the other, and unlike me, what do you? How does that? How do the two worlds mesh? Did, could you pull up the same feelings when you were playing Chrono Trigger that you did when you were actually role playing, or was it totally different? Uh, I think that there are some definite similarities, uh, and there are some differences. I think that there are more similarities than differences, though. Uh, in both, and it depends on what system you're playing to. Mm-hmm. But let's say Dungeons and Dragons versus role, you can, yeah. you know, video game. Um, in both games, they're very combat oriented. Combat is is most of what you do. All right. There's statistics. You know, you have certain percentages. Um, you have certain randomness that's involved. And you have a progression, a character progression, level progression. You, yeah. you level up certain abilities and things like that. So that side of it is similar. There is also an overarching story. Now, again, this is dependent on your in-person campaign. But right. your your DM, if you're doing a long-term thing, he may have an arc in his mind of where he wants things to end up. Okay. Yep. The differences are that um, it is when you're playing with your buddies and something goes off the rails, if you have a good DM, he knows how to roll with it and he can adapt the story accordingly. Right. Versus, you know, when we're playing a video game, things are predetermined and they're the same for everybody all the time. I can sit down and play Chrono Trigger right now. The ending would be this. There's 17 different endings. But you would roll through the game in the same way. Right. So is one better than the other? I mean, given the option, I would rather play with real people Anytime. I guess my bigger question is, and that did answer some of it. When you're playing Chrono Trigger, right? I don't know your character's name in that. Maybe Chrono. you name him. Okay, there you go. Or you can name him. But, All right, but let's say he's Chrono. Do you feel like you're Chrono, and do you do things in the character of Chrono like you would say with the captain um, in our Cthulhu game? In in Chrono That's the Trigger, part I'm really yeah. Wondering. So. In old school role playing games on the eight and sixteen bit systems yeah. on the consoles, there is none of that. Right, because the dialogue's already there. The dialogue's already there. The role playing aspect itself is like, oh, should I choose to equip this weapon or use this? Do I want to take my character down this combat path and level up? It's this? more tactical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, what about something like a more modern? Let's say like. I remember Fable was supposed to be a thing where you could make good and bad. Do you get the? Did you ever play that? Yeah, all you know, I play in Mass Effect is like this too. Any game with like moral choices and things, yeah. they're they still in video games. They still have not done that well. Yeah, you you you'll never have the amount of freedom that you do when you're sitting <laughs> around a table with your buddies and you're bouncing things off each other. And, and again, not to knock these things. I mean, and listen, I, there are some games that are great that I just don't play. Mm-hmm. All right, it's not their fault. Um, I my when I'm playing role-playing stuff in real life, like actual with people, 
the stats, the the percentages, the actual math is my least favorite part because I don't because I, it slows everything down. Mm-hmm. I like the experience and like the the act of people thinking and pondering and making moves and and reasoning and playing their, doing things that their character would do. Mm-hmm. And I've never gotten the feeling of that when I was playing a computer yeah. game. Yeah, you you can't. It's 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 almost impossible unless you're literally playing like virtual tabletop simulator and you're doing the same. So thing we're on sort of on the same page. Absolutely, here. Yeah. absolutely. But I mean, that doesn't mean you can't play them and enjoy them. No. It just means there. It's a it's. A, it's different. It's a different. I will say that I probably like the statistics side of things more than you do. Like I like the idea of choosing a weapon and rolling and having looking it up on the table and stuff yeah. like that. And some people like listen, my buddy Big Head, he he he's a min maxer when it comes to, like champions characters. And some people are my buddy Pat's like that. I've never been like that. I just like to have a cool character that I can relate to or enjoy. But you know, both both are acceptable. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's I always wondered about that. Because it's just something I could never. They're almost like totally. When they called them role playing games, I never got. The, I never got that part of it. They're like it's just another facet of like tactical game for me. There's not really the role playing aspect. I never really. I never really got, and that's probably why. Yeah, it, there really I think it, it falls into the case of there's not really a, a a word that describes what you do in those sorts of games perfectly, and it was sort of a new genre, and so role playing was the the best they could do. Very good. Let's talk about what's been going on this week in the world of everythingamiga.com, Aaron. All right. Uh, our good boy, the Dream Catcher, has been up again. This time he's looking at a game that I pr- we were pondering this before the show. I'm pretty sure we covered this back in the day. A game called Navy Seals. Now, have you ever seen Navy Seals? The uh, game of the movie? I have never seen. This sounds like something that's violent. I believe. <laughs> yeah, I'd say you're right. I I know I think Bill Pax is this, and I think uh, uh, what's his name, uh, old Cougar Blood guy. What the heck's his name? Old Cougar Blood. Or no, Tiger Blood. Uh, what's his name? Help me out here. The family. There's Emilio Estevez's brother, Martin Sheen. Okay. No, Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen. When you get old, this is what happens. I think he's in this. It is because it says Charlie right there. Oh, good. There you go. I've never seen this either, mm. but I did like the game an awful lot. And uh, Dream, <laughs> Dream Catcha has done his usual slideshow of the film combined with the games. Now, this game came out on multiple systems, which I also didn't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, you did know I that? I didn't know that, but I, as I was reading this, it, it, it came to me that it was a Game Boy version, a NES version, so this thing got around. Did this Was this movie successful? Do you know if it was a... I, this I don't is, remember this being a big deal. I think this looks like it's from the very early 90s, yeah. possibly, and... and I don't know. You know, I was eight years old. I wasn't watching a whole lot of. Can you imagine uh, Charlie Sheen as a Navy SEAL? Uh, well, he was a, he was in Platoon, right? But he but he sucks. He's a crazy drug taking maniac. Yeah, but you know, back then he was a serious. But Navy actor. SEALs are a real hardcore, you know, stud. Type. I think anytime you've got a movie with with military personnel in it it's sort of like watching west side story for the authentic you know like gang, gang action yeah they don't go like this <laughs> right doon, doon, doon. i thought they did anyway dream catch it goes down the line check it out if this is your bag or even if it's not i do recommend the game i i, I kind of liked it as far as these sorts of games go that's just me cool cool aaron we finally <laughs> you know after a couple of weeks of some some slow news uh we have some some fast news. We only have a couple so stories. Fast that, news. <laughs> we only have a couple we stories this week. Fast news. But it's um, they're they're good stories. I think they're good. The first one is there's a new <laughs> Amiga Ireland podcast. Okay. Okay. And they're going over a bunch of hardware stuff. You know, they they dig deep into the non gaming side of, of Amiga stuff. They're kind of the, uh, different than us. Is that, that is way. that a Pixel Vixen joint there? Yeah, and, you yeah. know, part of the reason why I put this on here is that uh, this this artwork for their podcast is done by Pixel Vixen. Yeah, and she is very very shortly, less than a week away, moving to Japan. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I follow her on Twitter. Yep. Good luck over there, Vicky. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but. Check out, if you're at all interested in the hardware side of things, what's new and upcoming on the Amiga, check out the Amiga Ireland podcast. Now, Aaron, back to stuff that we're more familiar with. Dranken. <laughs> what? It's Tapper, Aaron. Tapper is coming to the Amiga. 
Goody. I it's love this game. amazing to me that there has not yet been a version of Tapper for the Amiga because there's a version of Tapper for almost everything. That is stunning, isn't it? It is. It is. And of course, you know, Tapper is one of my absolute favorite games, uh, favorite arcade games. Yeah. I am very, very excited about this. There's some footage, of course, by Saberman. This story comes to us from Neil over at Indie Retro News. Uh, it looks great. I mean, he, the, the, you know, all the, the, there's still some work to be done in the, the character design. But uh, looks like all the mechanics are are kind of in place, so I w would imagine that it won't be long before this thing gets its full release. You know, I love this game, and if if the if I could afford it, and the cabinet was available, oh, the good one, the cabinet's so I'd buy good. the crap. It's got that bar at the bottom mm -hmm. of your foot. It's yep. got the actual tap. And I've, have you ever played this in the arcade? Yes, absolutely. And the tap makes a difference. Mm -hmm. It's that makes it more fun or funner, if you will. Yeah. So I fully endorse this. Now, I mean, we we covered. Uh, We've covered a few of the games that came home for the for the Amiga, and I, again, they weren't necessarily my type of game. They were great conversions. Mm -hmm. This is a game that I can get behind. I oh, really yeah. love this game in the arcade. It does look good. Yeah. And one more. This is actually a new release, Aaron. Tiny Little Slug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it claims to be a charming platformer. Uh, this this comes to us again from Indie Retro News. Now, now for, hold on a second. Tapper's not out. It's a preview. Ta yeah, normally and this is also yeah. a preview, right? No, no, no. This was actually released. Oh, normally, this is released. Okay. Normally we don't talk about previews on Amigos, but for Tapper, you make an exception. Okay, okay. Uh, this game is actually really released. You can download it right now. So it's free. It's free. Oh, beautiful. And it uh, looks like uh, you can uh, you can purchase a CD version, floppy disk, or as a downloadable file. I apologize. It is not free. We're gonna look and see how much the price is right now. Um, hey, it runs on a standard Amiga 500. Not yeah, bad. That's good. Uh, looks like order. My God, he'll get to the bottom of it. Tiny little slug. Price listed in product details. <laughs> Man, <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the product details scroll right down. now. Is this it? They don't get much more detailed than that. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's free. <laughs> Maybe we should add... Oh, 19 euros for the download. Thank, Thank you, you, Duncan. Duncan. All right. 19 euros? That's do very... We have, do we have video of this? We do have a video of this. Let's watch a little bit of this video. That's what, about 20, 25 bucks? Yeah, it's, that's it's not very cheap. Wow. I will say, this looks good. It does look good. This is this is definitely beyond, uh, you know, your uh, your sort of average homebrew Amiga program. Yeah. Um, this appears to be a puzzle platformer where you have no vertical jumping ability. You've got to maneuver through the caverns, uh, hugging the walls, which I believe is a lot like Globule, isn't it? Do you remember old Globule? Yeah. Yeah. This looks pretty good. It this does. looks very clever. Yeah. I, I don't know, though. 19 euros seems pretty steep for a download. Well, I don't know. It I, again, have, we don't have any levels are involved. We don't know any uh, custom music. We don't know anything about that part. So this is what we'll have to look at, and then we'll have to yeah. maybe. And according to Duncan, again, the uh, it's twenty nine euros for the download and floppy, or the download and CD. And I think that it's to me, it would be worth if you were really into this, paying the extra ten bucks to get the floppy, get the whole package. You get a box and stuff, presumably. Yeah, I, point, I yeah. probably so. So it's very clever looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and it, it is very pretty. Very pretty. So, uh, anyway, tiny little slug. All right, Aaron. We've put it off long enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's time to talk about <coughs> Ultima 5. Let's talk about this game, Bo. Now, before we kick into this, let's let's ask that age-old question. Have you ever played this or any Ultima? Sorry. Real-time follow-up. It's 19 for the floppy and the download. There you go. Okay. That's more reasonable. Yeah. I've never played Ultima 5. Yeah. I've had the proverbial cup of coffee with Ultima 4 on the Atari 8 bit. How much of a cup did you drink on that one? Most of my time was spent in loading. I see. So not probably you spent how much? Give us a rough rounded estimate on how much you actually played it. Under 10 minutes. Okay, so that's practically <laughs> not. <laughs> practically not. So, believe it or not, I'm old. And my buddy had either, either Ultima 2 or 3 for the Atari. Uh, it's Whatever the first one was, he had it. He had the very first Atari, one that was available on okay. the Atari. I, yeah, I, I know that I had Ultimate <laughs> War for the Atari, but I don't know the, what other games were released for it. The reason I remember this is my buddy was very proud of his Atari, much like yourself. And he hooked his Atari, you know, the, uh, uh, he hooked his Atari up. Believe it or not, originally this guy had his IBM PC hooked up to his stereo. 
So when this thing beeped, it would blow the windows out of oh his house. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, that's what he, he didn't have a sound blast or anything. He just had to beep. Right, oh yeah. That's he was, crazy. He was nuts. Yeah. But is he this Theo? This is Theo. Oh yeah. Eventually he had his Atari hooked up, and so then he would blow the speakers out on that. <laughs> but I remember looking at him playing as he had all the accoutrement, and I was mm-hmm. like, my God. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, mm-hmm. you know? Remember that thought as we move forward with Ultima Five. Now, Ultima Five. Warriors of Destiny, that's the full title, Boaster, uh, released in 89 on the Amiga. Um, this thing was developed by DMA Systems. Now, I thought to myself, DMA? Yeah. No. No, it's not It's the a same. different company. Uh, they did two games. Uh, they did Prophecy, or maybe just be one, Prophecy Viking Child. Those, those, Sounds like another role-playing game. Yeah. Um, now, the people that worked on this were not... Were they were uh, luminaries on the Amiga. They'd done a lot. Uh, this was coded by Keith Jackson. He did uh, Airborne Ranger, Butcher Hill, and Special Forces. The graphics on this were done by Dennis Lebet. He actually did, among other things, Space Rogue, which I have played. He worked on Ultima Six, Wind Walker, and Wing Commander. Oh, okay. It's hard to believe someone that worked on Wing Commander worked on this. But there are cut scenes, and I'm sure that's sure. I haven't played that yeah. stuff he did. Uh, the music on this boat... Barry uh, Lech, I think I'm pronouncing that right, amongst his claims to fame were Hero Quest, Humans, Lotus 2, Nightbreed, Silkworm, Supercars, and about a million now, other things. Now, here's what I'm wondering. All right. Um, because I don't, I don't know that all the sources break this down, but a lot of times the audio engineering and the musician get lumped in together. Yeah, could and be. So, because yeah. there is a secondary guy that also works on music that doesn't have any credits at all. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Now, we all know who actually made this game originally, and that was Richard Garriott, a.k.a. Lord British. Guy with an enormous amount of wad. Lives in a castle. Lives in a castle, went into space. Mm-hmm. He's uh, not, not a fruitcake. Not a fan of Donald Trump. Not, oh, is he I not? follow him on Twitter. Oh, is he? No. Uh, he's uh, I was a big-time D&D guy from back in the day, uh, and he's the guy that worked on pretty much all the Ultimates up to this one. Now, one of the things about this that I found out was this is the last Ultima that he pretty much did all by himself. Mm. I mean, you know, the story, right. the coding. I imagine that at this point it was a combination of him becoming so incredibly rich and also the games becoming so incredibly difficult to do as a one-man show. Yeah, he'd have to hire more It's help. amazing to me that a guy, I mean, again, when I say he coded this, and of course he coded the original version in this. Mm-hmm. The, the other fellas I mentioned did the Amiga port of this. Uh, but uh, my God. Can you imagine the guy who sat down and put this plot together? If you, I don't know how much you know about the plot, but my gosh, it's amazing. So this got a million conversions. I, some of these were surprising. I'm going to ask you about a couple. Um, of course, you had the Apple II, which was Apple was sort of the lead mm-hmm. uh, on the Ultimus up that, to this point. Yeah, Alcabeth was. I want to say, I don't know. I mean, maybe the chat can look this up real quick, but I want to say Ultima IV was the only Ultima on the Atari 8-bits. And the other, the rest of them were just on the Apple too. Really? Yeah. That maybe I I remember playing this when I was really young. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, but I mean, who? When I say young, I mean my teens. So right. It, it could have been four. Uh, anyway, uh, this also got released on the Atari ST, the uh, Commodore's uh, 128, the Commodore 64, the FM Towns, FM Towns Marty, uh, NEC 98, the Nintendo NES, uh, and DOS, the X68000, and, and there was a t- Tandy version. Have you ever played this on the on the NES? Yes. That's what I wanted to ask you. So give us the scoop. So the NES version is totally, totally, totally different. I read that. Um, it, it plays a lot more like a traditional uh, Japanese role playing game yeah. in that the everything turns into a uh, like a cursor based navigation. Yeah. So when you want to select something, instead of typing commands into the keyboard, you 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 highlight things on the screen. The dialogue system is all different. Um, it, for me, it was a much easier way to play this game, yeah. but that, that comes from my own background. Now, um, all the early, I mean, a lot of Ultimas got released on the ES, didn't they? Like, there was it four no, or so? I, I don't think so. I think only five. Oh, really? I think only okay. five. Okay. Um, so, this is the second Ultima in the Age of Enlightenment trilogy. Did you even know that? I did. Okay, okay, good. I didn't know it until I read it in the, in, uh, on the because on the it's I think it's three three and three yeah just like Star Wars the oh, best really? trilogy of trilogies okay there you go I didn't know that um, so let's talk about before we get into this let's just talk about what what's going on in Ultimate now I was talking to Buddha before the show it, 
We knew this one was coming, didn't we? Okay? So I went and I didn't even wait. And you know I never do this, but I print out the docs, okay? So if you're watching at home, this is my reference card, okay? This is the quick reference card, all right? If you're not watching at home, there's about four pages of straight up text, yo. This is my manual, which is a crap load of manual here. The manual inc actually includes uh, a bunch of different stuff, including a, the lore, the book of lore is in here. Basically, what you've got in this is, is, the, is the manual for the game, plus the expedition of Lord British, plus the, ma the lore manual, plus a manual that tells you about the, uh, the, uh, the world of Ultima, the economy, the different cities different buildings, stuff like that. This game was uh, one that I probably pirated and probably never booted. I don't remember because I I knew the Ultima games required books. Mm -hmm. All right, And this one's no different. It's the ultimate copy protection. And so when you start this game, uh, if you haven't followed Ultima, uh, you, you are what's called the Avatar, which is a guy that lives in our world. And occasionally he'll be called on to go to the world of Ultima to help Lord British in his kingdom, right? That's what happens here, effectively. If you didn't read the book, you don't know what's going on at the start of this game. I watched your video, and you had no idea what was going on at the start of the game. It's not your fault. You had to read the book, mm -hmm. which I read. So, your guy's in his house. He gets this coin thing. He goes out to a... Uh, he knows it's time to go to the ultimate world. He goes out to this garden, thing of rocks, door opens. He gets teleported to the world. The first thing that happens is his buddy's there, who the guy that summoned him, and there are three dark cloaked figures in this field. And when your guy shows up, they tr they shoot at the guy, your buddy, and they wound him. And then the thing you're holding basically scares them off and they run away. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. They do that for a reason. So, and I'm assuming you know this by now. In the game world. Uh, since the last adventure, Lord British and some of his knights have went around and they're closing up all the dungeons. Right. Okay? And they go to the nastiest, most crummiest one. They go down this waterfall, a couple waterfalls. If you read the book of Lord British, it tells you this stuff. They ended up having an encounter where a bunch of his guys got killed, then some more got killed, and then that's the end of it. He's gone. Well, he gets captured. Right. Yeah. He's gone. But you don't know exactly what's happened okay. to him. And, and, and so, since he's been gone... Blackthorn has taken over the kingdom. Now, Blackthorn uh, was basically his second in command, mm -hmm. but he's been, uh, you find out as you play this game that his mind has been uh, warped by these shadowy figures. Mm -hmm. And so you're brought in to kind of save the day. Yeah, so he becomes sort of, this is a, um, a it, all these ultimate games are kind of morality tales. Yeah. And <clears throat> the, the shtick with this game is that Ultima 4 is all about learning how to be good, the ultimate, you know, good person. And Ultima 5 is an example of what can happen when a good person goes too far to be good. And it becomes, instead of like, you should always be honest to like, if you ever lie a little bit, that your tongue will be cut out. You know, some something like that, you know. And so you go to all of these different cities where Blackthorn has left his mark, and you see these scrolls that have been unraveled that they give you these pronouncements, and it's like this enforced ultra goodness that's not good. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty deep stuff. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, more or less. Now, before we get too much into the actual game, let's talk about rolling up your character. If you've never done it in Ultima before, and I had, I had played, I don't know which one, but I've played other Ultimas past this one, so I had seen this sort of wacky, uh, uh, weird <laughs> thing you do, and, and basically what you do is you're asked these morality questions mm -hmm. and you whichever way you answer sort of shapes the kind of character you've got right, right? now could you tell what in the, what these questions meant what was what stats were changed and that stuff i never even you're not wrong in that this is not the only game that does this i think that bard's tale does this too i hate this i hate this so much really? because when i'm rolling a character i want to know what <laughs> i'm good at when i get done rolling my character so i know how to play this game does, it would be fine if they ask you these questions and it says, okay, here were your answers. Here's how this translates into your character. This is what you got to watch out for. It gives you none of that. I, you know, it's funny because I can understand what you're saying. This was so, when I, the first time I saw, I played a game, and it could have been this years ago, I can't remember. 
because they blend together in my mind. The first time I did this, I thought this was so clever. And so when I did it again this time, I still liked it because they do a good job. The questions you answer, it reminds me of when you go up apply for a job. Mm -hmm. You ever done that? They get I've a applied for a job before, yes. No, no, I mean, they ever had the questionnaire where they give yeah. you these ethical choices? Yeah. They don't all do it. Yeah. And, and that's what it reminds me. It's almost like a job app uh, uh, testing your ethics. And mm -hmm. the ethical questions, there's really not a wrong answer a lot of times. Yeah, I remember when Eep was applying for the Toyota over there, there were like 16 of these types of questions. I mean, this is a, a big deal sort of, sort of test. Um, you know, I don't have a problem with with. I think it's cool. You know, I think it's a lot better than allocating stat points at the beginning. But it, it isn't helpful in terms of knowing what's going on. It's very similar sure. to Heimdall. Remember the old Heimdall test that yeah. you have to take at the beginning of the game. It's like give me whatever you want, but after I'm done, show me what I've got. I thought I thought it was uh, unusual, and I don't remember a game doing it before this. But maybe you're right. It could have been another one. I don't, I don't know. These games again, they sort of all were kind of roll into my into my brain. So. When you start this game, uh, you and your two buddies are basically on the run. You're basically hiding out, okay? Um, your buddies are Shamalingo and Olo. Your buddies' names suck. I can tell you that right I mean, now. I mean, Shimino is my jam. Well, He's my boy. We're thing, in it together. I can't tell you how many times I got these guys killed. <laughs> Not many times. Shimino dies almost immediately every time you play. <laughs> when you start the game... Uh, there are very nice graphical screens to tell you what's going on. You know? <laughs> it is. That's not a good setup for when you finally start playing because the 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 intro screens look magnificent. They look so good. Yeah. They, they, and then you start playing, and then it looks less good. Yeah. And so, well, it, this game and all the Ultimates sort of did this. This game um, is a. It's this is the crossing line between text graph text adventures and graphic adventures. This is like, it's got a foot in both sides, doesn't it? I mean, it gives you a text. Well, I, I don't think so. I think something like um, Sands of Egypt is, is it has a foot in both sides. Well, camps. this is this This sort is of, more on the other side. But this is, that's all text with a picture. This is actually, a, this has both, a lot well, yeah, of Well, yeah, but all Japan, all role-playing games have both. Well, I mean, this feels more like, and especially the way you do commands and stuff in this. It's yeah, very that, text that, that part of it, I agree right. with you. And, and, and cause when you do stuff in this game, I'll pull up Appendix A here. Mm -hmm. You've got commands. You've got a text, uh, you've got a text area of your screen that, te that tells you what's going on, which way you're going, what you've encountered. It tells you... And there's a cursor there. Yeah, it's it's a log of every action that you take. <clears throat> Did you ever figure out if you could print this log? No, I heard you asking it. Um, and the, in the when when I played this on the on the live stream, I think that the, having a log is very useful. You know, you can go back and you can look at old conversations and stuff. The problem is that you can't actually do that. The log once it scrolls by, it's gone forever. I was wondering about that. Yeah. Um. So just to give you an idea of some of the commands you can do, and we'll give you a full idea of the whole look of the game in a second but you've got if you want to like climb something you hit k yeah if you want to look at something you hit l mm -hmm. right nothing happens automatically in this if you want to talk to somebody you hit t if you want to attack something you hit a you right. get the picture here mm -hmm. so it's not like it's totally unintuitive in every it, way it's not a context sensitive deal at all no it's not point and click yeah it ain't nothing like that yeah the graphic side of it the screen is basically split into like four boxes, one real thin one. You've got the main screen that's like a very tiny map with your character on it. Then you've got the text block. Then at the top, you've got your characters. And then in the middle, you've got some stats, okay? That, and so that's how you operate in this game. So when you're waiting for the big, when you see this big awesome opening here, like you said, that's soak them in. Mm -hmm. Because the rest of this game, you're gonna be staring at a, a, a map way up in space as you traverse this world. And the, the problem is not necessarily the window size, although it's not ideal. It's that you spend so much of this game, because this game has day-night cycle, you spend so much of having that window cut down even further yeah. by your inability to see. This game makes great use of Fog of War. Yeah. Now, let's talk about what you do in the game, okay? You spend the game moving around this world. Now, this this Ultima is truly a um, it's a it's two sides of a coin and they're vastly different. You've got it's so simple to look at. Plus you've got the text. 
this game is deeper than the ocean blue. Yeah. It's so deep, it's scary deep. Mm-hmm. You look at this, if you look at your at this manual, it scares, it's like looking at a D&D manual. You look at this thing and just look at all the crap you could buy, all the spells. They've got, this game's got its own language system, which the other games had it. This one you have to like, I had to look up words and start to know what the hell was going on. Mm-hmm. You'll come across a sign with a bunch of shapes on it. Yeah, you know? one thing that you, you should know is you should <clears> prepare <throat> yourself if you do not have the manual with you, if you don't have the full docs. Uh, all the signs, the signposts to different villages and things, they're all rune based. Yeah. And the rune code is not difficult, but it's, you know, you can either figure it out on your own or, but really, this, and I'm sure we'll say it again, if you're going to sit down and play this thing, spend the money, buy the complete version with all the feelies, spread it out before you, and then go to town. You should probably say save your money before you actually go, to, I'll get to that later. Okay. You're not just going to hop out and grab this one, folks. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't a tape. <laughs> so, as you run around this map, and there's a there's a plot that I'm not going to give away too much. You've basically got to, you've basically got to, to kill the three Shadow Lords. Each Shadow Lord represents this different emotion. There's like, I think hate, and there's um, sorrow, I think it's one. The other one I never can remember. But anyway, you have to go, to do that, you have to get these certain items to kill them. Which to do that, you have to get into the dungeons to get this stuff. To do that, you've got to unseal the dungeons. So this isn't like a, a bang bang operation. This is a game of its era. Because you're going to be walking around. I watched Boat play this for a couple of hours. I cackled as I watched this because I was like, oh, look at this boat. And then, I, having seen what he did, armed with this documentation, I sat down to begin my voyage and wandered around for a week <laughs> trying to figure out what I was doing, how to get people to tell you stuff mm-hmm. when they get pissed off. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the, the villagers and the people, you can interact with all, tons of stuff in this. That's amazing. But it's not necessarily helpful. I don't know how anyone did good at this game. I don't, it was so hard yeah, well, to figure out. It's funny because people always talk about with Ultima that it is it's extremely, it takes a long time to do anything. It takes a long time to get anywhere. Even it when, does. I, when I post about this on Twitter, they're like, well, that's the idea. You just keep doing what you're doing for a couple more weeks before you figure out the first step to yeah. do. And I can respect that. Yeah. You know, like I've got no problems with a game like that. It's an interesting comparison because Japanese role-playing games are different. Those are games that are they're extremely long, especially the early ones. But the reason why those are so long is because you spend so much time grinding to build up your, your health. Yeah. Uh, in these games, like you can beat the whole game as we're watching the speedrun right here without really doing any combat at all. You don't have to grind at all. It's all story. You know, it's yeah. all exploration. It's all story. Combat was tough for me. I got murdered a lot. Me too. Uh, the magic system's interesting. You can tell that Garriott was an old school, hardcore Dungeons and Dragons player because he didn't sugarcoat anything. Mm-hmm. This reminded me a lot of old D and D. You have spell components, spell you get chance of failure. You had to go gather the stuff you needed for the spells. You had to mm-hmm. mix the stuff. The moon cycles will determine what you can and can't cast, mm-hmm. and when you can do it, when you can travel in certain places. I remember from the old games, they had these moon doors, or I, don't, I don't remember what they were, moon gates. And if, if you could actually take them with you at certain points, you, there's a stone in the ground. I remember that from a, like one of the old, old games. He carries stuff over from the old games. If you get real deep into the plot of this, the whole plot of this game is based on something that happened in one of the other games. Like, I mean, it carries on. So this, wasn't, this is a guy who took attention to detail to a new level. I mean, he wasn't screwing around. And this, the game is not easy, and it punishes you often. Yeah. Uh, and also, just to get back to that code, I understand where he was going for, and when I was younger, I would have dug that, mm-hmm. but I don't like it now. Yeah. I don't like having to have the manual in one hand constantly. I think The spells are all coded. You have right. to do all that stuff, but that's a pain in the butt. It's, I agree with you. Um, when I was a kid, I loved like when I was a kid, I loved decoder rings and stuff like that. Yeah. I thought that was super cool. Now I just don't have time for it, um, and it's a shame, really, because I think that I probably lost some of the the awesomeness that I had when I was younger. But um, it's it's really it's hard to say that this is not a good game. 
This is a game that has aged poorly. It's a game that comes <coughs> right at the end of the era when games could still get by looking like this. Like yeah. If you look at Ultima 6, the game got a big facelift. Um, and it starts to look more like a modern game. This is a game where you have to take tons of notes. Yeah. Whenever you're talks, whenever you're talking to people, you got to write down what they say and remember it. Um, and it's it's just not a game that's really easy to get into in 2020. Well, you know, we were talking and before the show. Me and you were talking about our the Spectre game this week. This is another game that has to be looked at in the context of when it was released and who was playing it. You know, uh, it takes uh, it takes the patience of a kid. And with with no other games around, mm -hmm. and to and to sit in a bedroom for a, days and weeks to play this kind of game. Now there are still people out there that could sit down and go for it, and I wish I had the, I could do that if, yeah. if I had the time or the attention span. I don't know, you know, like at the end of the day, I wonder. It's like if I had infinite time right now, would this be the game that I'd sink it into? Well, but you know, you can't look at that now from the. I mean, if but there say, are some games that we play that I do absolutely think that. Right, but I mean, if you if you let's say today is nineteen eighty nineteen eighty uh, what what eighty nine, and this is the game sitting in front of me that time it's brand new. You may have a different opinion about. Oh sure, it, you know? absolutely. The uh, to put I want to mention this because I saw it on a wiki and I had to bring it up to put in perspective the detail put in this game. Um, Garriott programmed the game. Because there's a telescope in the game that you can look up in the sky. He programmed the game to accurately depict planetary orbits. Insane. Okay? Insane. That's what I'm talking about here. Now, uh, I played this off the GoTech. All right? I got it to load. And uh, it wasn't too big of a pain in the butt. I did read nightmare stories on the C64 about this game. They mentioned it in the wiki that the uh, they had built a their own loader that would load this thing real fast, but it only worked on the 128 or the 64 from NTSC mm. because it was based on the the uh, cycles. That's right. And mm -hmm. so, but on the PAL, it apparently was like mega slow. Mm -hmm. So I, I know a lot of people got killed over that. But I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, tidbit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I uh, I played this a lot. In fact, I had this with me at at, at work. And I'd have it on my laptop. I would just play it when I had idle time. just to. And I did see a bunch of the world. One of the problems with this game as well is it takes forever to get across this world. So if you need to go somewhere, or you don't even know where you're going, again, it just the, takes forever yeah, Again, to though, there. that's that's a feature of an, of an old school role-playing game. You know, yeah. you've got, There's no fast travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, you're right, man. I know. Uh, it said that this game was ported uh, from the PC... Which is why now we should talk about some of the places we don't really don't like. Let's talk about the music. <laughs> Go ahead, Bo, because I, when you stumbled across this, I was like, I know he's going to say something about that. Well, it's funny because when you start playing, you're like, there's a tune that's playing, and you're like, oh yeah, it's, it's music. Yeah. yeah. However, the tune continues to play. Yeah. And play and play until you want to tear your hair out. Yeah. It's, it gets it gets old. Um, it would have been nice if they would have had, and the NES version has this. Where you go to, you know, whatever zone you go into, it's got different music and stuff, and that's that's yeah. cool. Um, I don't know why they only had one tune. Well, get this: the Amiga version. That song is the o only appears on the Amiga version. But guess what? Other versions have tons of songs yeah. that don't do that. Yeah. So Amiga got screwed on the yep. song. That got turned off instantaneously. Mm -hmm. That is that feature sucked. Yeah. Feature in quotes. Yeah, the feature of only having one song. Horrible. That was horrible. So that was a huge screw up yeah. right there. And they, there's no excuse. It's not like when we talk about ports that came later on, you know, in like the, the mid to late 90s for the Amiga. And you could see, well, maybe they were just sort of half assing it. This is 1989. This is the heart of the Amiga. Yeah. There is no excuse for you to be backing off on anything here. Listen, some people may not want to hear it, but it's a fact. Quick and dirty port. Bam. That's yeah. all there is to it. That is an inexcusable thing. Yeah. Um, you talked about the feelies and stuff. According to what I could find when I looked into this, uh, amongst the things you got were the books, a cloth map, and you also got a coin representing the the, uh, the codex 
From, that was part I, be, of the game. I believe that getting the coin was uh, present in every Ultimate game. There was a different kind of coin. I like that. I watched the. Um, there's a good video Metal Jesus Rocks did. Uh, he basically unboxes every single Ultimate game and talks a little bit about them. If you're at all interested, if you're an Ultimate newbie, I suggest you check that out. Um, we were talking about the C64 version of this. It didn't have any music, which sucks. You had to have a 128 to get the tunes, so you. They kind of got screwed. Yeah. I don't know what is with the music Well, this, right? I mean, the thing is, that you know, uh, this is a massive game. And, yeah. you know, maybe you just needed the extra power of the 128, you know, to now, get the music. Now, get this. This is something wacky I found. Okay, listen to this one. And I didn't know this. Richard Garriott did not like Trip Hawkins. All right, the guy that ran Really? Right. So they're like titans that are rivals. Right. So, like Dusty and Rick. Yeah. So Hard times, yeah, brother. that's right. So, he, in the game, if you look, there's a mausoleum named after Trip Hawkins, which uh, basically, I don't, I guess, to badmouth him. <laughs> and he also, uh, he also had a few other things in there that basically badmouth Hawkins. That's weird. <laughs> He's one of the few guys who get away with that, probably, uh, and, 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 get, and come out the other side. They both were in the ramparts of their castles, throwing bombs at each other. Yeah. So, where do you fall on this thing? Let's, let's put this to bed. I mean, and I'll tell, I'll just mention this to Bo before we came on. Uh, one week is nowhere near the adequate time to judge a game of like of like this. We can judge the game, what makes up the game, the components of the game, but as a whole, and having looked over the story, the story in this is incredible. From a D and D perspective, two thumbs up. It's awesome. I like the moral. Mm -hmm. I like all that stuff. I like mm -hmm. the books. They're well written. Mm -hmm. As a game. In 2020, I'm never playing it again. Right? It's just it's too much. Right? Even young Aaron didn't play these games. Mm -hmm. It was too much. It was too much like work. Yeah. Uh, but that much said, if this is your bag, you will be rewarded with a good story. I will say that. What do you think? Yeah. This it kept striking me. Um, you know, as I as I looked back and forth from the screen to the instructions, the games like this, I would rather just read a book. I would rather read the Ultima Five, the novel. You know, I, I feel like I would get more enjoyment out of that than constantly. I don't like having to come into a game. I don't like having to read a book to be able to come into a game. I want the I want the game to lead me along by the hand a little bit more. Well, I knew this game was deep. In fact, we got we actually got tipped off that this was coming, and so the first thing and I, I you know, I played these, and so like I said, I, I spent a good deal of time just reading the material. I love the material. Yeah, I really do. And unlike, I mean, it really is well written. What was that? What was that? That other game we had to play where the guy kills himself at the end. You had to read the novelette. Oh yeah. To get in. Remember that? Yeah, one? yeah, yeah. I wasn't a fan of that. I didn't think that was very well written. But this, this thing, I mean, like it reads like any fantasy novel <laughs> does. It's, it's good. It's good. It's and uh, uh, but I mean, in terms of the depth of this game, it's deep. It's just that the interface just wasn't there for me. Yeah. Now, because I'm a spoiled 2020 jerk. Now, okay. if I go back to this, I will play the console version because at least then I will be able to have sort of a menu-driven system that I can navigate more easily. I will say the console version, from what I read, was totally different from this. Really? I mean, there's a lot of differences. Okay. So okay. There you go. Um, I did look this up for uh, for uh, reviews. I did find some. Lemon, the people there gave it an 8.25. Uh, Ace gave it uh, a 91. Joystick gave it a 95. Amiga Joker, 95. And Amiga Power, 93. Uh, the game, Ironically, the game was ranked 18th best game of all time by Amiga Power in 91. So I guess they changed their tune. Yeah. Ace uh, said this was the game of the year in 89, best role-playing game of the year 89, and it made the Ace's all-time list. What do you got? Uh, we got some reviews here, Aaron. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I take it all back. We got no reviews this week. I I, I saw, have, we thought I, we had at least one. I saw a lot of people that were bowing out on this one. Yeah. I saw a couple people. Um, so I priced this on eBay, okay? And I had a feeling this was going to be expensive. And as you get back into the Ultimates, I should mention, this also has the rep of being Garrett's favorite one. Really? So, that I never read. Interesting. This, is, this, really, this game is heralded by people that aren't us that yes. really know what about role playing games mm -hmm. okay because of because of the plot and the morals I, I i dig what he was going for oh yeah all right um on ebay i saw this go the minimum i saw one going for was 32 bucks 
And I saw them going all the way up in the, into the 90s, depending on the what was still with the box, you know. So you're probably going to pay some money for this one. Now, that much said, you probably it's probably a sound investment because games like this, there aren't that many, mm-hmm. and they're still popular. Yeah. And 89, there are probably still some, more than, say, the third or the second Ultima, obviously, but it would be bad I tell you, to pick one I, up. I remember... Uh, and this has been years ago. Looking at prices for Alcabeth, the the very first oh, open the plastic bag yeah, and all that, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, before we go, Aaron, we should probably talk a little bit about what's been going on over on our YouTube channel. Uh, we've got some new videos up this week. Uh, the first one we should talk about uh, Magic Land Dizzy. This was last week's our Sinclair. So uh, last week we had a go with uh, Magic Land Dizzy, um, another game of its era. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know it's 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 another Dizzy game. Actually, I, I didn't think th- I thought this was way better than any of the other Dizzy games I've played. Yes, and yes, I, compared I, to the other ones we played, it was uh, still. On the show. I also didn't instantly get murdered. Yeah. So I called it a win, as I recall. And I, I this one, I mean, this is a game uh, that was that I liked. I, I mean, in terms of, the, of a Dizzy game, I yeah. thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, I played a couple Atari games. Uh, I played um, Mr. Do for the Atari. This is part of the uh, Atari High Score Champion uh, Club over on Atari Age. Mr. Do's a heck of a port on the Atari 8-bit. Heck of a port. Um, and it's weird to see it that long. And yeah, it's- yeah, it stretched out a little bit. Um, we did have a classic computer club meeting last week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we played a bunch of Intellivision. The Intellivision was the star of the show. You brought that thing over. We had a blast playing that. Yeah, I, uh, I modded the Intellivision. Actually, I'll, I'll thank uh, uh, Eric Nelson uh, over at uh, Pixel Guiding for, they've been talking about, and Cody as well, talking about uh, Intellivision modding it. And I've had mine sitting around forever. And that, that is the problem, that RF. It's hard to get fired up to play the games that look so bad. Mm-hmm. And I will say, we played the crap out of some Intellivision. That was, we had a lot of fun. That's the most, that thing's been up for a long time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, finally, uh, we have a, oh, not finally. We've still got a couple more videos. Uh, Amigos on Tour. This is Pixels at Dawn's final uh, video. Pixels looking, he's looking like a model. He does. He looks like freaking Dean Kane in 1995. <laughs> um, oh, wait, that's an ad. So, oh, oh there, he there, is. That, there I am. Did you just think I was Pixels? That's no. me. I thought with the guy the ad. I know who you are. Oh, okay. You so, look, all the luminaries of Amiga all in one shot. That's right. That's right. Um, but Pixels basically took, he shot so much footage, and he he's combined the best of the best all together. There it is, Super Dodge, oh, Game of Games. the bane of my existence. Um, check this thing out. You know, if you didn't get a chance to see any of our um, Amiga Ireland footage and you want to see just a, a quick shot of the best of, Pixels has done a fantastic job. This is the video well, I that seen I this. yeah. This is the video that I send people when they ask about what I did. Um, I say just watch this. That's uh, great. It's great. I you, love it. I mean, this it's amazing. Oh man, I'd have bought every one of those manuals right there. <laughs> I could have sold you some Amiga oh, magnets. Oh man, that's a good. Um, and finally, Aaron, we released a new Coco Show podcast where we talk about <laughs> Starship Chameleon. Yeah, I like this game too. It could have been better, but it was still pretty good, and it's it's a very unique game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that's going to... Oh, wait, one more, Boat. What's, what's that? What did I forget? Uh, a little show called ARG Presents, Boat. ARG Presents? Yeah, remember us? Is that a Brent. show on our network? Yeah, oh. it sure is. So this past week, listen, I lived your dream this week, pal. You did. You Acorn did. freaking Archimedes. We played it. I love the Archimedes. This is the exact opposite of the ST, or the Falcon, I mean. <laughs> My experience with the... With the uh, with the uh, Archimedes was great. The, I liked the OS. Uh, I, 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 the, I liked my game. I heard from a guy who sent me all the manuals to this game so I could really get intimately into it. Very Did impressive. you ever figure out why it's called Chalks Away? I know why it's called Chalks Away. Oh, it's because it's the leany thing, right? That's the thing that keeps the wheels from spinning. Yeah, the leany yeah. thing. We had a lot of fun with this, though. It was the other thing. It was something about, like, tally-ho ginger. Did you ever figure that out I that? Didn't know. Okay, you never figured that out. But uh, we had a lot of fun. We, we played, well, I will say the game Brent picked was unique. I will say that. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. And uh, uh, this week we're going to be playing games that were released only on Windows 3.x. I am really looking forward to this. You know that Windows 3.1, <coughs> it can multitask in the Amiga, couldn't. 
I saw your idiotic <laughs> post that I'm not going to comment on. You're nuts, by the way. <laughs> Amigas Montesky crushed that. But that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Yeah, it's, you just destroyed the chat. It's time to wrap things up. Yeah. <laughs> Before the hook comes out. I do want to thank Blendo75 for his uh, suggesting Ultima 5 and for the Amigos Game Selection Committee for voting on it. Um, last week, the Patreon song, Aaron. The streak has finally been broken. Pack Billy. Pack Billy. Yeah. You back. guessed it. Pack Billy guessed the name of the song. The song was Just My Imagination by The Temptations. Look at that. Tally Ho Ginger is a reference to the Biggles books. You know, the Biggles books. I don't know the Ginger was his flying partner. Thank you, Pixels, because I don't know what that means, but at least with the mystery song. Yeah, we, by saying it live on air, someone will be like, oh, okay, yeah. and they'll get it. If you know the answer to this week's Patreon song What was last week's again? Just My Imagination. Okay. You knew it. Did I? It was just No, I didn't know what... I, I, I know that song, but I, I didn't get your version. What about when I throw in the moves? That makes it me sort of nauseous. <laughs> we do have a new supporter this week, Aaron. We want to welcome Tech Mage. Te oh, yeah. Tech Mage to the stage. You, you didn't watch Babylon 5, did you? I watched the good one. The hot Starbuck. Babylon 5, not Battlestar Galactica. It's all the same. No. They had these guys called Techno Mages on the show. They used technology to simulate magic. It was awesome. That does sound awesome. It was great. They were awesome. And feared. They were awesome and feared. Ba oh, yeah. Carry on. Good name, dude. If you know the, uh, this week's Patreon song, you can send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com. Tech mage Zebedee's magic round. About Jurgen, Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Zorglub, Commodore Kid, Jorgman, Nuts and Reflections, I'm in Lich Cap and Crispy Kilobytes and Caffeine, Mike W. Decker, Three Wood, Gary Heather, Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford, Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobster Minator, Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast, Bernard Quinn, Retro Man Cape, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Edder, Robbo Hera. <laughs> Howard Nips, Matthew Lara, Andy Craig, oh. Sean Zo, Darren Lomax, Colin 419, Bark Bit, Roland Burke, Andrew Mum. What's out there? Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Leaf, Kellon, Allen, Kebab, Check. Gote Level Lord John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRosha, Creepy Dead Boy. <laughs> Biggie C T Z the slow Norris <laughs> Stefan Sorgan Mortensen Edvin Helland Blindo seventy five Christopher Hassel Ravi Abbott Chris Foles Dream Catcher Laurent Chabuka Oh M Greb Keelane Denson Adam Batters B O'Brien's Retro and Mintage Gary Huck Gussie, Brian Jones, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Tapes from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim, Tommy Humbert, Chad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, <laughs> Pixels at Dawn, and Kjolbjorn Barman. Brutal Barracuda? Hey man, it's He's the end musical. of the song. He's a musical guy. You know what a coda is? Huh? You know what a coda is? Oh yeah, I know what a coda is. All right, hit me. He's a guy from the Bronx that puts that makes programs. Or Boston, depending on where you, you're. You know, you your can't even go. get that joke right. Come, Come on, on, either man. way. <laughs> that was a good one. It was great. He's a coda. It was fantastic. Pocky ka. So like very Horowitz. Um. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, chat. <laughs> 
Um, or sorry, Chad. <laughs> uh, we want to thank especially our people that are watching us live on Twitch right now. Pixels of Dawn Gaming, Johnny Renegade. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Uh, Edvin Helland is here from the Man Cave. I am Paul H., the boss man. Wing Chun Wolf, boss man. I just told Aaron that you're never in the stream, and here you go, popping up. He's been here several times. Go to go sub. Wing Chun Wolf is here with us. Uh, Tonight. Bark Bit, um, Frodo and El Mitsuyama, El Curtis B, Bike Me, Paul Kitching, Delamort78. Thank you guys so much for being here with us this evening on the show. And we do record every Friday around 5.30 Eastern Time. We have Sprung Forward, which either puts us in or out of Daylight Savings Time. I'm never sure which. I can't even remember that. And um, yeah, you can always check our show out on anchor.fm slash Amigos Podcast if you want the uh, audio version or our YouTube channel. I try and remember to archive the shows on Twitch, but sometimes I forget. I believe that that's everything. We do have other shows, though. I guess we should plug real quick. ARG Presents, The Brent and Aaron tackle a different computer slash video game slash theme Sometimes every week. Sometimes they tackle us yes. violently. We've got 1200XL and Tari 8-Bit Gaming Podcast. All our, right. Our, that's my motto. Our Sinclair ZX Spectrum Podcast. The Coco Show. Oh. All about the Tandy color computer. So if you like old computers... And you like old men. <laughs> well, that's right for you. Fit, you'll, you'll, fit, you'll fit right in with it. And us. you can go back and listen to the old episodes of the old show. That's We've right. We've got the whole library. It's ready for your perusal in the book. Everything is archived and ready to rock Did you and remember roll. that stat you put up this week of how many shows we've done? And yeah. The numbers that was, what, do you it's remember like what it was? 375 hours of content. <coughs> so, Amazing. Ludicrous. Is. Yeah. Sinful, frankly. It is. It is. Well, guys, thanks as always for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, adios. I gave him that. Be seeing you. I like it. You're not a prisoner guy, are you? No. Is that a prison signal? In, in, in the village? That's where everybody It takes like, a village. Be seeing you. That, that's, is that, that the M. Night Shyamalan? No. Well, no. This is the this is the prisoner, the TV show, the prisoner. Oh. Patrick McGowan. It's, even, it's a third thing I didn't know what it was. At first, I thought you were talking about in prison when are you, you go going visit to get, the prison. Where are you going to get fancy water to pee? Which Both. one is it? I can use the upstairs facilities. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can go now. No, I, I'm not going to leave. The no, who will entertain Listen, the people? Nobody likes nobody likes Twitch more than when there's nothing going no. on. No. What I like to do is when you're gone, that's when we really start a bad mouth. And really, what do you do when I'm here? What do you think of Boat's hair now? <laughs> not so good. Pat, see, you guys, they all know what I'm talking about. Finally. No, the prisoner. The prisoner. Would you just go? You know, go get your fancy water. You know, no, you don't want to see the bricks. So let's talk about Ultima Five for a minute, because I. It's, now, Pixels, I saw your comment there. I I did play that over two weeks, but I don't want to. I don't want to break the fourth wall, man. But here's the thing: I could have played this sucker for ten weeks, and I would have been bowed. This thing's hard, y'all. <laughs> Someone in here has had to have played this game, aside from us. Look at this. Look at this stuff. You know? This this is a lot of action here, man. There's a lot to remember. Look at this. This is all this stuff you can buy at the store. Look at all that. That's just this is this is a quick reference card. You call that quick reference? Look at that. You won it back in the day, Wing? I should have hired you as a consultant, my friend. Look at this. Here's the language you've got to decipher to figure out what the hell's happening. You kidding me? I got murdered a lot in combat. So I'm much like the speedrun guy, I would often flee. You know, it was it was brutal. In fact, almost every time. Every once in a while I'd try to kill something with usually hilarious results. I wanted to give myself I wanted to give a good accounting of this game. So everyone would feel like they got their money's worth, you know. And I, I think I, I think I, pl I mean, I didn't, I don't think I shortchanged anybody. I want to give it its fair shake. But this is a tale of two games this week because we're doing Target Renegade on the other show. And this game, you can blast through this thing. <laughs> it takes less time to read this or to play that game than it does to read that. I would like to have the game. It'd be awesome to have. 
uh, because I just it, the stuff I like the box. The box has an awesome picture on it, you know. Yeah, you got your money's worth. No kidding, man. Did anybody play this Ultima Five on the C sixty four? Because everything I read said those people got totally screwed. I'll be right back, fellas. I'm gonna hit the hit the restroom. You can take over. That. I'm gonna take over. We're just talking about Ultima Five. <laughs> Look at that, I got the mic caught in my beard. That people love when your mic gets caught in your beard. They do. Remember the one guy thought that the mic sounds that when we had the problem with the USB, it was your beard rubbing <laughs> against the mic? You never know. By it, the way, we need to tell the people that I crushed your high score. Aaron no. Well, he he beat my high score by about ten thousand points. So I saw you know, trust me, and Matt's gonna beat it, and so is Chad. What's Matt doing tomorrow? What's he going what's going on? Chad's birthday. I didn't realize it was Wilcox's birthday tomorrow. I've already got his present. I've, I've had it literally since his last birthday. I found the perfect present. You guys, you might know might know Chad from our uh, classic computer streams. He's the guy that always falls asleep on the couch. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I will wrap that up tonight. Hey Ten Mark, did you uh, did you play Ultima Five on the uh, on the Amiga, or did you just play it on the C sixty four? I forgot my water upstairs. So I'm gonna have to go back when Aaron gets out. I'm curious um, if there were people that bought. Uh, that were so into Ultima that they actually upgraded from C64s to Amigas just to get that that greater. I mean, obviously, you know, Ultima Five still looks pretty rudimentary, but I'm sure that it looks better on the Amiga than the C64, or even the C128. What have you been playing, Edvin? What uh, what C64 games have you been into? Um, Paul Kitching, who I think is still with us, sent me an image that I'm going to load up. And, uh, you know, one advantage of this whole thing is, uh, this whole coronavirus thing, is I'm going to have a lot of time to play a lot of games. Yeah? I, oh, yeah. Aaron beat my high score. He wants me to mention it again. Yeah. Yeah. How long did that stand? It stood for a while because nobody attempted it. No, we figured it out. I attempted it. I just failed. Well, I'm glad that you did. I want I want people to I want there to be healthy competition around that table. Oh, it's healthy. Hey, you know the uh Hey Trey Guard. What's up, Trey? What up, yo? Hey, you know the uh you know the uh, video game and store in Milton that you hate? Yeah. They're going out of business. Thanks, Boat. I, I shut them down. It was my it was my dressing down I gave them on the Their computer. Their owner's been meeting. sick for a couple of years. Well, I hate that. I don't want anybody to be sick. I don't want them to close down, but I don't know. Oh, I man. think where'd that doodad go? It's okay. You don't need it. No, I need it. Um, I'm a heavy breather. I think that the uh, they did they did more of their business in the magic card trade than in the video game trade. I don't know. I bought a ton of stuff there. I've got some good deals. Yeah, I just think that they're. I've got my are, eyes on a couple ColecoVision sticks. I'm maybe gonna, you think they're going to have a going out of business sale? Well, I'm going to go over and get Chad something. So. I've already got his present. I'm going to show you what I got him. <laughs> See if you like. All right. I can get my water anyway. Go get your fancy water boat, Mr. Fan. You mean you went up there and didn't get your water? I forgot it. Oh, jeez. Look at this guy. All right. We're going to get started here in a second here. Yeah. They're not that Hey, at least he's wearing them, Edvin. You know what I'm saying? I don't mind it so much. Tomorrow's the Chud's birthday, uh, which we won't be broadcasting live. I don't think anybody would care to watch, but a couple years ago for his birthday, you know, I often pick on the Chud. And so I felt bad. So a couple of years ago, it's been about 10 years, I let him hit me in the face with a cake. Oh, no, a pie. That's, in fact, that's what inspired, that's what inspired the, us throwing it on the show. That was horrible. That was a lot less fun. <laughs> Getting old paperbacks. Ooh, Star Trek. Look at that. You think I like this? I'd probably take that one dollar sticker off that I one. I should probably take that off there. But still, I mean, you don't see those. All you the, could all the pencil time. in cheap bastard right there. <laughs> you might want to pencil that in too. These look. I mean, they look. I'm sure they're great. And it's original series stuff. I wouldn't yeah. read them, but man, look at that chick. Check her out, guys. And look at these freaks. This is <laughs> this is what happened when the stripper actually shows up at the kids' party. You get that. There you go. Look at her hair too. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll probably just take off this. There we go. <laughs> now it costs a million dollars. Just that, add, added zero to cool it. That's a cool looking cover. Yeah. See the Enterprise flying over the world like that? Yeah. It looks like it's like a, getting ready to get ran over by a pinball. I'm sorry you don't like me. That's too bad. Did you forget your water again? Yeah. Are you kidding me? You need to go get examined. Yeah. Anybody read these Star Trek novels? I'm guessing. I even read some of the Next Generation novels back in the day. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Oh, dude. Trey Guard. Dude, I've got a stack of those suckers back. Oh, the. Now, Choose Your Adventure Trek books? I don't know if I've ever read any of those. I read the, the hell out of those Choose Your Adventure books back in the day. I've got a huge stack of them. I've been trying to turn my kid on to them, but he doesn't seem interested. He likes reading Pokemon stuff. He loves that. You know, and uh, Captain Underpants, some other stuff. Not my bag. Oh, God. Star Trek Voyager novel? No, thank you. Time for a good old-fashioned book burning. Man, can we have a show where you don't trash Voyager? You're killing our main audience. <laughs> By the way, you had to get your shot in, didn't you? You can't. You cannot help yourself, can you? I can't help myself. Yeah. What are you talking about? Bad mouth and the Amiga. You should love that. You should go over right now and big that thing a big old smooch. Is what you should do. Well, I do love the Amiga. You're always bad mouthing it. No, I'm not. You're telling me the uh, Windows had better. Uh, uh, Multitasking the that was Amiga? A, that was a joke. Oh, I can't tell anymore, Boat. I can't tell what you're doing. Damn, my arm hurts. It's because your arm hurts. That's why that you might can't be. know what I'm doing. That might be what it is. Look at this. This is the exact. This is the reference guide for Target Renegade. <laughs> That's all you got. <laughs> all right. Switch the scene. Switch the scene. It's like um. I'm gonna start hanging out with the skate. Support the Coco Show and listen ad free. Plus, get cool perks and rad swag. Because <laughs> I didn't play it. Oh, look at that! All I right. saw that for about two seconds. I mean, you would have kicked it yeah. overdrive. Hello. Mm. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry for the periodic coughing, fellas. I'm trying. All right. Support Claire and listen ad free. Go to patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Did watch the one there? No, because it doesn't do it all the time. We're going to try it, it again. Is it me? Yes. You need to scoot toward me a little bit. I know. Snuggle in, Boat. I will. I like having my elbow out here like this. Why? Let's look at that. You're not driving a car. There's no one. <laughs> we'll be back to pick you up later. <laughs> so you'd rather move the camera than scoot over towards me? I don't. That hurts, Boat. Well, you're hacking your brains out. Listen, you're going to get it. We're all going to get it. Oh, that's good. You see the G4. See a real computer back here. Where? It's right behind. That? The Plastic Fantastic? Yeah, heck yeah. Me? All right. Real boat anchor. <laughs> How appropriate. Support our Sinclair and listen ad free. Go to patreon.com slash our Sinclair. Our Sinclair is also brought to you by the Div MMC Future from the future was 8bit.com. Quit waiting on tapes and fooling around with WAV files, and load your games instantly with the Div MMC Future, a jumperless, switchless SD storage solution for all ZX Spectrums, from the 16K all the way to the plus three. Get yours today at thefuturewas8bit.com. Hi everybody, welcome to Our Sinclair. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today Aaron, we're gonna be talking about Target Renegade. All right, all right. Now, what is a renegade? What is a renegade? Yeah. Well, someone who doesn't play by the rules. Really? I, I guess. Have you considered yourself a renegade in the past? No, I play by the rules. What about yourself? I'm a little bit of a renegade. How do you figure? What do you do that's that against the grain? Some, like a like cool guy style. Sometimes when I'm walking down the hallway at school, uh -huh. I'll see some trash on the ground. I won't pick it up. Just gotta kick it. I just kick it, walk right on by. You're not a renegade. I know people see me not pick it up and they think he's bad news. Is that what they think? Yeah. I don't think I can't see it, boat. 
You know, there's a horrible... Do you remember the Ultimate Warrior, the wrestler? Yes. He remember was one of my dun, heroes dun, 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 growing dun, dun, up. He'd come in and shake the ropes, uh-huh. do the press slam. WCW didn't have him. He was in WWE, so they came up with their own guy. What was his name? They went and found this muscle-bound goofball, and his name was the Renegade. Really? Yeah. He'd come to the ring, make up, a big muscular guy, he'd shake the ropes. He'd get in the ring, and he'd suck. Mm. He's no good. And they jobbed out really good wrestlers to the Renegade because they were trying to get him over, mm-hmm. you know. It didn't work. Now, we all know what happened to Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. Um, what happened to the Renegade? A very similar fate. Really? They both, he's, he's, he's no longer with it. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. But he was horrible. He was horrible. Ultimate Warrior was no great shakes in the ring, <laughs> right? I remember hearing a story. You know, Ultimate Warrior, they did, they did a series of matches where Ultimate Warrior fought Andre the Giant. This is right before Andre died. Some of his last matches. And they'd have the Ultimate Warrior come in and give him a move and pin him. Really? And you got to remember, the, old, the uh, Andre the Giant was undefeated for decades. Mm-hmm. They said one night, uh, what Andre liked to do was this bit where he would get tied up in the ropes, and the guy could come over and hit him. Mm-hmm. And he said one. They said one night, uh, Ultimate Warrior, it's one of the first nights they fought, he came across the ring and, and, and gave him a big potato. Don't potato Andre the Giant, no. man. He, uh, did he turn around he and just destroy him? <laughs> yes. He clubbed him. They said about killed him. <laughs> he said that was the last time he ever potatoed Andre. That's awesome. I love so, it. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior had a, had a history of, of murdering guys. Mm. He had a series of matches with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Loser puts on a weasel suit match. Now, who do you think is going to win that match? <laughs> and Bobby, he was in there potato and poor Bobby. Bobby weighs about 98 pounds. He's an old guy. I can't believe Bobby was still in the ring at that time. <laughs> he was, man. It wasn't not for long. <laughs> That's true. Well, Aaron, we should probably leave the world of professional wrestling. What? And enter the world of Target Renegade. <laughs> oh, well, if we have to, we'll go stroll down the street to Target Renegade. But I'd heard a lot about this. So what do you want to? I, I, you know, I, I don't. This is not a world you want to enter. It's not. <laughs> this is not, this is, not if you want to live. Yeah. that's for sure. Um, I've heard of this game for years and years and years because of the NES port. Um, when the is ver- that a port? Absolutely. Oh, I have to look here. Um, yeah, it does say NES. I mean, the darn. very first video game book I ever bought, I purchased at the book fair. Remember the book fair at school? They still have them. I had yeah. to pay top dollar the other day. Um, they uh, it was Consumer Guides Guide to Nintendo Games. <laughs> this had a red cover. I can think about it like it's just yeah. yesterday. Okay, yeah. I remember this kind of book. Yeah, and I bought this book, and Target Renegade was in there, and I still remember the words of the interview or the the words of the review were, "If you just want to get in there and punch some dudes, Target Renegade's the game for you." Yeah, and I never played Target Renegade until this week. And I st- I recall those words, and I was like, yes, that was an accurate assessment of this game. I agree. I agree. Now, before we can get into Target Renegade, let's talk about the original Renegade. All right? Did you know there was an original Renegade? I do. And Did I, you know it was in the arcade? I know the entire story. Please tell me again. Oh, there's a story behind there. There, there is a story. Okay, so, you have to tell us the story. Okay, so Renegade was a coin-op game. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. And Ocean licensed... Renegade with the option to produce uh, sequels themselves. This is one of the few times, this might be the only time I can recall this ever happening ever, where a company says, hey, we want to make a home version of your game and we want the right to produce any sequels ourselves. And so Target Renegade has nothing to do with the original Renegade in terms of its development team or anything. Yeah. In name only is it a sequel. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. It's a- I wonder, they must have seen something, or maybe they had a guy that knew something. Because here's the thing, like, was Renegade a big hit in the arcade? You know, I, I remember playing it in the arcade, and I thought it was not very good. Right. And, and I remember seeing them. Right. But I saw, like, way more of, like, Vigilante. And I just wonder, you know, like, why did Ocean think it was so important to pay for the rights to the Renegade name? Because it's not as if this is a brand new concept, roll around beating up dudes, you know? Really, you could have called this anything. Yeah. But maybe... Did you play the original Renegade on the Spectrum? Yes. You did? Yes. What did you think? It's much, much harder. I could not get off the first screen. <laughs> really? Yeah. But I mean, is it, is, oh, the it's, a similar, it's a similar conceit. You start right. off in a subway. I guess you're in a parking garage here. You start off in a subway in the other game. But the first boss is just impossible. Yeah. Well, I didn't play the original. I just played this one. So I don't have a reference, but mm. I, I'm glad you did. So now the original arcade Renegade came out in 86, uh, manufactured by Taito, Taito, however you want to call it. Uh, the usual gimmick, you run around fighting people, you know, it, and it reinvent the wheel. Everyone was like double dragon, like, we could do that, and they did. 
So, flash forward to 1988. Here comes Target Renegade, man. Um, this was published by Imagine Software Limited mm -hmm. uh, and authored. Let me get go over this, some of the specs on these authors. Programmed by a fellow named Mike Lamb. We've ran into this fellow already, Boat. He did the Arkanoids on here, Batman, Combat School, RoboCop. He was a port machine. Top Gun, W. Yeah, yeah he did a lot. The graphics were done by Don Drake, uh, who did Airborne Ranger, Batman, Breakthrough, uh, Game Summer Edition, and RoboCop and Super Cycle. Now, um, the, what, the one of the sites I looked at had Simon Butler um, accredited on this game. I don't know what he did, all right, because he wasn't accredited. On one of the places I went. But I do want to mention him because he had an all-time great idiotic old man rant this month on Retro Gaming Roundup. If you want to hear Simon Butler, just go crazy. Yeah. I have to talk about this for a second. Okay. Here's an old guy that looks on Facebook, and he's, he's feuding with somebody. Now, if it's you or me, and you just write something back like, you stupid bum, mm -hmm. you know, no. If you have a podcast, you've got an hour and a half to fill. <laughs> you work this guy over. With the, all the Crayola colors of the cursing rainbow. Mm. He ran out of material and sort of recycled it. I mean, this stuff, <laughs> I've never heard it. This guy, uh, he he put together a tapestry of hate that it was both colorful and broad. Mm. It was beautiful, gorgeous. Mm. So I had to mention him on here. If you're into that sort of thing, which I know you're not, but and I'm not really What either. is the name of the podcast? Retro Gaming Roundup. Okay. This uh, is SoCal Mike and Chameleon Stan. And <laughs> well, SoCal Mike's no longer with them for the obvious reason that he screwed them. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is Super Didn't Brad. Well and, uh, yeah, this okay. is in uh, uh, UK Mike. There, it's a interesting. It's a long podcast. Yeah. I like I've, I've, so I've listened to it before. Um, anyway, he's on there. He does dinosaur pie. Um, again, his I don't know what his what he did on the game. Also, uh, Jonathan Dunn did the music on this. Uh, he did Adam's Family Boat, Chase HQ, Daily Thompson, New Zealand Story. We've done a ton of these games, RoboCop. So you had a lot of you had a lot of uh, guys that knew what to do on the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, this worked on a 48 and 128K. Now, I think the 48K had no music. Is that the way this worked? The, correct. Mine had music. Yeah, because so. it's the 128K. This is a dual cassette, so you know you plug it in and whatever machine you've got, it'll loop. Okay. Uh, you know, Kempston Control, the usual stuff had redefinable keys. The front end was good. I liked it. It was quick. It was to the point. Mm -hmm. One or two players. This has two players simultaneous play. That can't be overstated in terms of its effect. That's a that's a big deal. Okay. So what do you do in this game? What's the plot, boat? Let it on, lay it on us. Okay. So here's the plot. Your dude, and uh, there's somebody. That, there's a boss. There's a boss man. It's Paul. It's, it's a, he's it's, responsible. It's, yeah, he? he's responsible. Um. You gotta, you gotta take him out. You gotta uh -huh. go get the boss. So you're, you're set loose in various locales, yep. and you're given uh, the boss has got some henchmen, and by some I mean a cast of thousands. Yeah. Okay. Well, Roy, it's a cast of a couple. Well, it's that just, helps you, he's been cloned yeah, like millions yeah. of times. Um, and so you negotiate your way through these varying environments, destroying all people in your path until you reach the boss, and then you take him down. Yeah. So that's one way to look at it. So let's. I want to just talk about my first impressions of this game. Okay, <laughs> I got first of all. You know, I usually play on the keyboard. I got my keys all set up, ready to go. The very second this game starts, if you don't react instantly, mm -hmm. you are ran over by a guy on a motorbike. I love it. It's my favorite. He opening ran over me uh, as I stumbled to try to figure out what was happening. He just ran me down <laughs> over and over. That is my favorite part of the entire game. <laughs> the, the the way that, that they start the game where you're just it's boom and then all of a sudden coming out and at first I thought it was going to be a cutscene like the motorcycle was going right. to pull up beside Maybe you. Maybe he's going to like rob you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no. He just mows you down. That's it. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I hated this. <laughs> and when I figured I had a jump kick, I beat the crap out of that guy. But of course, he shows up hundreds of times. But in this game, the motorcycle guy. They give you no chance. There's no learning curve. Yeah, and there's only one move to take him out. You got to use the jump kick. Right now, because everybody knows when a guy's coming at you with a motorcycle, a well placed jump kick will be thrown him. Let's talk about your guy because these guys all sort of look the same. The graphics on this, I mean, there's color clash coming out the yin yang, but it can't be helped in this case. Your guy is just a burly looking guy in a vest, attacked by other guys that look like him. He looks like me. 
I will say these guys have the most unique posture in gaming history. <laughs> their legs, I wish I could stand up with this, their legs are come before their chest. Mm -hmm. And so they, they almost, you remember that guy, that, the, who was it, Crumb, that did that guy, it's like walking like this. With the, it's, you know, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's a soulful strut is what, what it is. It is. They all look, it's so, it's so funny <laughs> you know, to watch them walk around. I used to, I there are several, there are several marching bands in the South <laughs> that adopt that sort of a march forward. That can't be good for your back. No, no. So you fight these guys and it's, this is the quintessential beat them up. Mm -hmm. You punch people or kick them until they're gone and then you go off the end of the level and, and that's the, and that's the level. Yeah. There are five levels uh, that all look there's their street, street wall, alley, bar. You know, it's not like they. I mean, the graphics of this are good for what they're showing, but it's not like you're not in front of the Taj Mahal. Well, no, I think it's realistic though. I think that you know, you, <laughs> this, yeah, I suppose so. Well, this is a you know they they they're they're trying to show you what you know the inner city is like. You know, and, yeah. and there's like New York, 80s New York or Detroit or something like that. The inner city often has yellow brick walls with a picture of Waldo <laughs> stapled on the front. All the time. All the time. <laughs> also, lots of girls in miniskirts trying to beat you up. Yeah. Although I'm assuming these are women, but they look pretty burly too. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, I thought that not only did the graphics look serviceable, uh, they're they're fantastic for the spectrum. I think that there's a lot of detail in the backgrounds. Of course, there is color clash like you mentioned. The, there's not a great variety of enemies, but what is here looks good, and it's it is different. You know, each stage looks different, so I'm in favor. I thought it was okay. It looked okay. If you get two people on this, it's it's more than okay. But I mean, like you said, it's a, it's the standard thing that that hampers most of these beat 'em ups. You got a couple different people. It's this game rinse and repeat. I mean, once you've played the first man, you've played every part of the game. That's true. I mean, it was no surprises. How, did you go through the whole thing? I I play. I couldn't get off the first. Like I I couldn't get out of the parking garage. Um, what? Yeah, I couldn't get out of the parking garage. My God! I just I kept dying. I'd run out of. I'll tell you what. I'd run out of time <laughs> before I'd run out of lives more often than not. No, I, I could get through. I got through uh, almost all the levels. I don't think I beat it. I can't remember. No, I didn't beat it because I didn't see the end guy. So you run through this game. And you fight people. I mean, that's it. The music is okay. Uh, the weapons are okay. But I'd the say weapons, I don't know what most of them are. I'd say the music is present. I said okay. I was being polite. It's yeah. there. It's. I mean, it's there in the way that music is in a lot of 128K games. But it's got nothing. It's The music doesn't fit. It's sort of a haunting. It kind of reminds me, what is the... Um, like sands through the hourglass. What is that show? Days of Our Lives. Yeah. It reminded me of something from there, like like a theme song to like a soap <laughs> opera or something. And so, th like um, in the like you said, the weapons. It is cool that there you can have people drop weapons. You pick them up. Yeah. You hit people with it. Very double dragony. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's there's there's not a lot of that breaks up the action. But at the same time, there's not a lot of that breaks up the action in any beat em up. Yeah, I mean, I will say it's the. Me and the boy play a lot of beat em ups, you know. Mm -hmm. This game would is not that unlike most other beat em ups, except for the fact that it's you know it looks a little bit different because it's a spectrum. You do get the jump kick, which is your number one kick. Mm -hmm. It's your number one attack. You've got this, the old punches. You've got the back kick. That back kick, I had a heck of a time getting scoring with the back well, kick. Well, the, the back kick is satisfying, though, because you spend a lot of your time in retreat. Yeah. And so being able to fire a back kick off is a good move. He can easily get overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You're, the, the way you scroll the screen it makes a difference. Something else that you could actually get on top of a guy and pound them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which is cool. But the problem is if you're with a bunch of people, you can never get to do that. Yeah. You get murdered. Yeah. Uh, the weapons, I, I didn't have too much real picking them up. I had to learn. There's a bit where you could grab a sucker and then repeatedly knee him in the groin. Mm -hmm. That was satisfying. Yeah. But again, if you, if you get caught... The problem with this game, I almost always use the kick. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you well, take the time to grab a sucker or get on top of him... His buddies come over and maul That's you. right. The jump kick gives you two things. Number one, it's it seems like I could get that to land more often than anything else. And two, yeah. it separates you from the guys that are coming. Yeah. Too. It puts some distance between you and the next man. Yeah, and you can hit that thing from far away. If you if the animation hits them at any point, they fall down. Right. Right. And they fly backwards, mm -hmm. so it gives you like you said, it gives you more time because you're constantly under fire. Yes. Yeah. And the bad guys can do sort of the same stuff. So they can grab you, knee you, punch you. Mm -hmm. The punches, I had trouble. Instead of going like whack, 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 I'm not going to be like whack. Well, he just 
He just punches all of his stuff that he's over like a bop. Yeah. You know, like this. Mm -hmm. Not effective. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I never used the punch because it was worthless. <clears throat> well, this is a flaw in the game because I always used to kick. You always used to kick because it was the most effective thing. But and that, that's part of the game is using other stuff to be fun. But here's the thing, though. Like, with beat-em-ups, there's always the one attack that's the best attack. Well, you, a lot, most of them have, like, throws or, like, power moves. Oh. That, that They kind of break it up. And this one, you just had the big, big kick. Even the weapons, they do damage, but they're not like... you, you got to remember, too, this is early on. Put aside the fact that this is on the Spectrum. In 88, beat-em-ups had not really matured yet. Uh -huh. 88. Well, I mean, it's you're sort of right. I'll, I'll give you that. But I would... I, it's This game, having two players simultaneous play on the Spectrum, it, I can see why it's famous, okay? But I guess what I'm saying is, if I look at it in today's eyes, it didn't age well. To me, this is just another run-of-the-mill, kind of lame-o, attack-and-repeat type game. There's, I, nothing, I, yeah. there's nothing that separates it makes it special to me. Well, to me, what separates it is that the characters are well-animated. The scenes look good. The backgrounds look good. Um, and, I mean, what else do you have in a beat-em-up? Like, I can't see on the spectrum at this time anything better. I will say they give you lots of life. Yep. You, I mean, your guy's pretty... Doesn't... I didn't like the time limit. I, we have talked about that before. Yeah. I wish they'd have done away with that because, I mean, sometimes it just takes a while to kill all these guys. It's not like I'm sitting around loitering. That's you know? one of the problems with using the flying kick. Yeah. If you grab it, a guy and knee him into groin a bunch of times... Yeah. <laughs> He's going to go down fast. The problem is, it's just, it's like I said, it's hard to pull off. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I had that... I, had, I ran out of time a lot. But, you know, you know like I said, the graphics are... I, Two players at once. It's a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's a big deal. Uh, but, you know, eh. if I, if I, it's 1988 and I've got an, uh, 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 if I got a hanker to play this sort of game, this probably isn't where I'm going to look. I mean, I know. But still, it's nice that it's there. Um, I should have mentioned that this, this came out, Boat, at a, a kind of an odd price. Usually we get these things. But this one came out for eight pounds on tape, 15 bucks, 15 pounds for the disc version. That's not bad. And that's a little bit above the normal rate, I think. So, I, but, I did, this was a marquee title, and I'm sure that they were looking to recoup on their investment after purchasing the Renegade license. It must be pretty popular because I saw plenty of these for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so that usually, I have a feeling this because you, again, you have to put yourself at the time when it was released. There was nothing else this good at this time for this computer. Is this uh, amongst your collection? This is not. I don't have this one. That's amazing. It's a, yeah. You've got so many tapes yeah. over there. Um, I looked up some reviews on this boat to see what uh, the folks thought. So, the World of Spectrum gave this an 8.39. They really liked it, man. Now, I wrote some stuff down here for uh, from your Sinclair. They gave it a 90. But I liked, I liked the way they, they delivered this dialogue. Let's, in this sequel... There are five loadable, rough, tough, smelly city parts. Wow. The multi-story car park, the street at night, the park, the shopping mall, and ultimately Mr. Big's bar. Each has its own selection of burly brick wall types, you know them, all weightlifting and no conversation, <laughs> who crowd in and attack you from all sides with punches, kicks, or blunt instruments. All knock you dribbling to the floor and chop a chunk of your energy off. I like the fact that I like the way they wrote that. Me nice too. Thing. That's when they really knew how to write reviews. Uh, some of the other reviews of this: Crash gave it a ninety, CBG gave it thirty-five out of forty, Sinclair User ten out of ten, Your Sinclair nine out of ten, as I mentioned. Ace gave this a three six hundred and fifty-three. <laughs> Go figure. Um, the Game Machine eighty-five percent. This was also released on the Amstrad and the C sixty-four. Which did you look at either one of those? Mm -hmm. I didn't either. Um, this was a Crash Smash. And this was voted number 13 in the top 100 Your Sinclair Readers games of all time. Now, I will tell you that I, I did take a look at the NES version of this. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, it plays almost exactly the same. That is, it plays poorly. Um, it, it's, it's for a Spectrum game from the time that it was released, it's okay. But this came out about the same time as Double Dragon 2 on the NES. Yeah. And, and, and the Rosetta we, Stone? No, that was three. Oh, don't. Sorry. Double Dragon 2 is the Revenge. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, and th there's no comparison. And it, on top of that, the, the enemies are all the same. However, however, <laughs> the NES Target Renegade soundtrack is among the best songs I've ever heard in my life on a oh, video yeah? game. It is so, it gets you pumped. It gets you ready to rock and roll. It's so good. 
listeners, kind listeners, <laughs> if you do nothing else this evening, YouTube up Target Renegade for the Nintendo Entertainment System and listen to the soundtrack. It rocks. You know, I, I know there's another Renegade in this. There's another one of these uh, Renegade games, too, right? They had three, I believe. I, I, is there really? I think there is. I okay. think there's a third one. Renegade 3? I don't know what it's this called. This time it's personal? I remember there's one of these that is universally hated. So but I, I don't remember which one it was. It can't I, be this one. So it's I, try not be this. To, I try not to look ahead or behind because I'm afraid we're going to get those games. So I don't really do much looking, you know? I will say, what was the game on the NES where the two guys fought just in the street over and over, the same two guys? Oh, that's Urban Champion. This is way better than yeah. that. Oh, I yeah. Will say oh, that. yeah. It's Urban Champion is not is a no, weak game. No yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Also, Urban Champion's from 1983. Oh. So give it a break. Well, this is close. Um, Paul, a.k.a. Hermski, writes, the Target Herm. Renegade. As a huge fan of the Renegade games, I had to give it a 9. Wow. The levels are well created with no clashes. What? Animation is stunning, providing an addictive beat em up game. It's not a difficult game, and that's probably why I liked it. Taking down the bad guy and gals was very satisfying and rewarding as you worked through the levels. It's apparent that the music and sound effects took a backward step compared to its predecessor. However, the fighting in this edition is a lot smoother with more cool effects. Now, where did I leave that lead piping? He did say no clashes, right? I'm not sure where he's going with that, because maybe he means that, maybe like... Maybe the clash isn't on the soundtrack. No, because, you know, like, uh, sometimes when you have colors in the spectrum and they're, like, it's like the blocks of color, this, your guy, is just transparent. Yeah, but they still change... The bad guys and the good guys, they all change color when but they're, they're, the But they're all transparent. It's not like they're colored and they're clashing with another color. Okay, maybe... I'm trying to give Hermski the, the benefit maybe, of the maybe doubt Maybe I just don't here. understand the lingo. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you skipped one. No, this is uh, this is people. Oh, <laughs> you love that. No, don't you? I love it. Uh, D Man writes, along with its prequel Renegade, Target Renegade was and still is one of the definitive beat 'em ups on the spectrum. Back in the day, the inclusion of two-player mode felt like a real leap forward, and certainly was one of our go-to games along with Gauntlet when friends came around. Gameplay still holds up. Eight point five out of ten. Wow. These are very high scores, aren't they both? Lord Soup says 7 out of 10. Slightly unresponsive controls, but big bold sprites and sensible coloring. Fun game. We'll play more. I like sensible coloring in my games. Yeah. Um, and Pixels at Dawn writes, A game I didn't play until recently, but is actually a really solid brawler in the Double Dragon style. Once you've learned not to hang around trying to kill everything and hence run out of time, the game is easy <laughs> to get into one. and looks really nice. Unfortunately, I'm bad at Brawler, so getting much past the first area is a challenge itself, but this game is fun and probably even more so multiplayer. Could benefit from an additional moves, but that wasn't the w what that wasn't the way from Brawlers back in the day. Still fun today, however. 8 out of 10. All right, there you go. We're Wait, not another one. We're not done yet. Chris Folds, this is, might be our w most reviewed game of all time. It's making, up for, <laughs> it's making up for all the Ultima 5 reviews that we're not posting. Yeah, this um, is much easier to get into. Chris Folds writes, A cracking Double Dragon-style brawler port for the ZX Spectrum. Varied levels and characters, and surprisingly easy for the genre and year, means you can really get a good game out of it even today. The 128K version has in-game music, which quickly got on my nerves and had to be muted. A fun 8 out of 10. Wow. And he'll kill a game. Yeah. Frodo NL writes, Quite a brawler with a good variation in opponents. Brawlers are usually not my thing, but this one is very playable. I was able to complete a run-through of the complete level <laughs> set once. While I have heard better music, at least it is a different tune for every level. And finally, Rushi writes, A primitive beat-em-up hampered by a small move set and single button controls. I'm not certain how it compares to other games of the same genre on the platform, but it's a far cry from comparable games on the NES at the same time, such as Double Dragon 1 and 2. After hearing people talk about how this version was better than the mediocre NES port for years, I've got to say I'm pretty disappointed. At least the NES version had a rockin' soundtrack. He's with you on that, eh? Yeah. However, um, I will say that if you're going to play a beat-em-up, uh, I'll be interested to see how the actual legit Double Dragon plays on the Spectrum. I mean, as a, if you just want to go with your buddy, yeah. and this is a game you want to people Look at on. the bar. I love seeing the bar. I oh, mean, yeah. I love these levels. No, I mean, I, I, they look fine. It's just, it's, it's a very 
And you're right. This is a, it's a rudimentary beat em up from a time when they were just kicking it up. Mm-hmm. It ain't bad dudes or anything like that. Right. They were kicking it up. So, I mean, at that on that aspect of it, it's okay. I would like more cool moves. I yeah. won't say that. Yeah. And yeah. also not getting gang beaten when I try to do one of the <laughs> uncool moves that I've got. Right. Okay. Uh, before we close this thing out, I do want to remind everyone that uh, our Sinclair is part of the Amigos Retro Gaming Network, including Amigos, Everything Amiga, uh, 1200 XL, and Atari 8-Bit Podcast. We got Coco, the Coco Show, uh, TRS-80, Color Computer, slash Dragon 32 Show. You can find all those at anchor.fm slash Amigos Podcast. All our shows on one feed. How many shows are we debuting this week, Boat? We got about six or seven all right, more to go. man. Um, I also want to thank all the fine folks that are watching us live on Twitch. We record the show live every Friday on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. I want to thank Pixels at Dawn, Star Modder. Gary Hucker is here with us. Nice the to Huck, see you, Huck. It's Huck. been a while. Amiga Love is here. Good to yeah. see you, Amiga Love. Jan Holbro is here. Uh, Barkbit, of course, from Sweden. Represent Edvin Helen, chilling out in the man cave. Yeah, yeah. Mitsuyama. Um, Duncan Styles go to go sub. Darkwing. Darkwing is here. Yeah. Darkwing 602. Thank you guys so much for chilling out uh a with horde us. Of people. Yeah, man. in I the love chat. It. Um I have a feeling that the time change is going to benefit us since we're not three o'clock in the morning over in Europe. Yeah. Um and of course we can't let this show go by without thanking the fine folks over at Patreon for uh, helping us out. You can support our Sinclair at patreon.com slash our Sinclair, just like Mark Downey, Hermski, Andrew Waite, Cap and Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham Bebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt. Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Bossman Harrington, and Christopher Hassall. Thank you guys so much for supporting our Sinclair. Um, and hello to Graham down in, down in uh, Africa. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. Sing that song for us, Graham, and send us a tape. Mark Downey, Hermski, and away, Captain Crispy. Oh, God. I said Graham. No, you said, John, please sing the Patreon song no. on all the shows. Oh, God. No, no. <laughs> I'll go to Africa. And finally, we, uh, we want to thank Chris Folds, member of Clive's Club, for suggesting Target Renegade. Uh, and next week, Aaron, we're going to play a little game I like to call... Battle cars. Oh, 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 battle cars. I like battle and I like cars. You know me, I'll judge a game strictly in its name. And that's <laughs> I the be, best thing I've ever heard. I want right to be here. on board with this yes, one. This one cars. comes to us from Clive's Club member Hermski. All right, Hermski. So, that sounds like a winner to me. Yeah, man. First violent gang fighting, now violent car fighting. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys. Thanks for listening and or watching. We will see you next week. Until then, rewind tape and press play. Pretty good. That's it. All right, six more shows. Oh, Let's God. Thank God. I'm losing my voice. It's I a know. good thing we don't have anything It's a good thing news. that we only did two tonight. Good stuff, guys. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Listen, I saw someone say they were surprised that we didn't give this more love. Amiga loves if this is not an Amiga. But here's the thing. I play a lot of beat-em-ups with the kid. I mean, a ton of them. And I'm spoiled. I'm sorry. It's true. I play tons of these things. And this is just as... I mean, with even Double Dragon, there was stuff to jump over and more cool stuff going on in the environment. They just, just seem just like a flat surface where you fight. There's nothing going on. The weapons aren't exciting, you know? I think you may be overselling Double Dragon a little bit. <coughs> Double Dragon's cool. It's got conveyor belts and boxes falling off stuff. And it's, it, there's, yeah, I and guess there's you're right. It's and stuff. Yeah. You know, and multiple levels. I never got anywhere in this game that had any of that stuff. Yeah, I guess you know, you're right. So yeah, sorry, picks. I just forgot thanks, to Super. I forgot to mention that we're playing Tennis Cup Two next week. Next Ooh, week we're playing Tennis, tennis Cup, Cup Two. Yeah. Bring. So um, so tune in. Too uh, bad they canceled all the tennis. They canceled football, everything. It's golf. All, there will never be sports baseball, again. Baseball, wrestling. They will. They'll never cancel wrestling. They'll. They'll. They've they'll canceled pay. wrestling everywhere. The only thing it's not canceled WrestleMania. All the shows that they tape live are going to like. No, empty arenas. It's they're, all jacked up. But they're going to empty arenas. Yeah, but I mean, that's what's fun is that. No. The you, wrestlers are going to come in and play the crowd. There's no one there. That's going to be great. You could hear them set the spots no, and everything. No. Ooh, Battle Squadron. We did cover that, dude. It was awesome. No F1. Yeah, that's a Pinball League. Pinball everything. League's canceled. They did cancel my staff meeting. That was cool. Yeah. I did like that. Listen, our advice... 
pull down your pants and slide on the ice. That's what I would say. Which wrestler said that? No, it was from MASH. Hmm. You know what really made me made my ears prick up on that that Ric Flair documentary? Mm-hmm. Was when they when they cut between him giving one of his speeches and all the NFL teams doing oh, yeah. it, and I was like, man, that's when you know that you're he's immortal. Over. Yeah. You know, and then Snoop came on. <laughs> oh yeah, he's over. Did you see him at the Lakers game of the night? No. It, or it was like LeBron James. Woo! Or it was a it was, it was Lakers. It was Lakers. He was like, "All right, boys, and the, the franchise of all franchises." <laughs> and he was—he strutted out there, and the, the sidelines were going crazy. Bonkers, and LeBron was just nose selling it. He's like, "I don't know who this is." Yeah, I was like, "Come on, LeBron." <laughs> Maybe he saw the documentary and saw the real flair, and was uh, his star sort of dimmed in my eyes. Everything is canceled. Every—it's a complete disaster. So you could look at this two ways, Boat. There's sort of the defeatist way to look at it, like we're all screwed. It's over, end of the world. But the way I like to look at it is. Chillax, mm-hmm. right? Get you a cold one. Yeah, fancy you know, water. You know what I suggest is uh, the old Diet Extreme. There will never be a run on this. Diet Extreme Citrus Drop. Go get you a 20 pack. Yep. Head on over to your, get get you your Kmart. Get you some chips, right? Get you um, a couple of sandwiches. Where do you even buy that anymore? Kroger. Oh, I always forget. It's Diet Mountain Lightning yeah. that's no longer and available for purchase. Chill out. Get you some games on. Something tells me there's going to be some more shows coming out. There's yeah. going to be some live streaming. Gonna I'm going to be, be doing some, a lot of live streams over the past couple of weeks. There's going to be uh, crazy times Big going stack on. of Spectrum tapes with my name on it That's right over right. there. I've already got the Plastic Fantastic set up and ready to stream also. So get ready for Mac action. And I've got the Commodore ready to go. Yeah. So we're going to be delving into the realm of weirdness. We're going to have a good time. Show up for some live streams. We'll have a good time. Maybe we'll have a little drink or two. Yeah, man. You know? Yeah, man. So... It'll pass. That's my that's my advice. Absolutely. This advice and not endorsed by the uh, <laughs> disease control center. But still, it should be good. I right. hope everyone's okay. Yeah. Just take care of yourselves and stay calm. You know. We'll see you guys later. Adios. Adios.